Musketeers are a sparkling 20 and 2 and ranked ninth in the nation. The Duquesne Dukes are off to their best start in nearly 30 years. It's a high flying A10 matchup from Pittsburgh, and it's next. St. Joe's coach John Griffith. Looks like we have some friends as well here, John, for this matchup between one of the more upstart programs in the A-10, the Duquesne Dukes, and then the Goliath of the conference, the Xavier Musketeers, who are playing their best basketball right now, winners of 11 straight. Yeah, Xavier's playing with a tremendous amount of confidence. They have tremendous balance between young and old and inside and outside players. But the Dukes are playing with confidence, too. They won seven in a row earlier this year. They played a tough schedule against Pittsburgh, West Virginia, and Duke. So they're going to be ready for tonight. They're going to have to be ready for stud junior forward Derek Brown, who has provided this Xavier team with a spark, also expanded his game. Well, Derek Brown is probably one of the best athletes in the Atlantic 10 Conference. He's averaging about 14 points a game. And you're going to see more than your share of dunks out of Derek Brown tonight. But as you said, he's also knocking down threes. He's the inspirational leader of this basketball team. And when it comes to the Duquesne Dukes, they have gotten an unexpected explosion from senior point guard Aaron Jackson. Yeah, I think he's an underrated player, but I think people are starting to take notice. Aaron Jackson's a lone senior on this team. I love the way he passes the basketball. He reminds a lot of people of Norm Nixon, but he can get to the rack. When he beats his man in the lane, he always has his heads up, but he can also finish. You're going to love watching him play tonight. The Palumbo Center is fired up for basketball just moments away. Xavier Duquesne, it is next. up and make some new family memories this winter and spend some quality time with the kids at the Mid-Atlantic's number one resort. Children under the age of 12 are free. For more information or to make your reservations, call 866-437-1300. Hi, I'm Quick Mick from Mick's North Hills Chrysler Jeep and Mick's Superstore. This just in. If you're looking to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, you'll save money at Mick's. Plus, selected vehicles have a lifetime warranty and great gas mileage. Experience the quick mix factor. Save time, save money when you buy at Mix. Come see us today on McKnight Road or Robinson Township. When you buy from Mix, you're in the driver's seat. I survived the Class 4 hurricane. I survived an avalanche. It's not much that scares me. Except going to the dentist. I know how to go because my teeth were bad. Really bad. It's not a good way to go through life. The best move I ever made was going to Aspen Dental. The dentist was so relaxed, it made me relaxed. Our exclusive Confidence Dentures start at just $1.99. I used to be afraid to open my mouth when I talk about my bikes. Now the guys can't get me to shut up. When I see you smile. Legacy Remodeling has the solution to all of your home improvement needs. From our own corning basement finishing system and sunrooms to windows, siding, roofing, and doors, call us at 1-800-NEW-VIEW or visit us at LegacyRemodel.com. Legacy Remodeling. Pass it on. This presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. Welcome back inside the A.J. Palumbo Center. Ryan Rubo alongside John Griffin for this A-10 matchup between Duquesne and Xavier. The crowd is fired up. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. See for Xavier, the freshman point guard Holloway, B.J. Raymond, Derek Brown, C.J. Anderson, and Jason Love. And for Duquesne, led by senior point guard Aaron Jackson, along with Duty, Bolding, Clark, and Saunders. The two head coaches, Ron Everhart in his third season, has completely turned around this Duke program. And for Sean Miller, a homecoming here in his hometown of Pittsburgh. 
42nd meeting between these two teams. Xavier leads the series 25 to 16, but Duquesne has won two of the last three games at the Palumbo Center. And this certainly feels like a home court advantage tonight, John. Well, you know what, Ryan? It also has the feeling of a playoff game. And this is getting into the crunch time here. The games in February become real important for any kind of argument a team wants to make for an at-large bid and certainly for seeding in the Atlantic 10 tournament. But this is a great environment here at the Palumbo Center. People have turned out to see the number one, the number nine ranked team in the country. Let's take a look at John Griffin's keys to the game. Let's start with the Xavier Musketeers. Well, Xavier wants to make sure they don't turn the ball over. They had some trouble earlier in the season against UMass. They want to control the basketball here, and they want to take advantage of their size. They are bigger than the Duquesne Dukes. They don't want to take advantage of getting offensive rebounds in the lane. And as far as the Duquesne keys go, John? Well, Duquesne, it's a little different story. Duquesne wants to keep the second shots to a minimum, all right, because obviously, Xavier has an advantage, and secondly, they want to get points in transition. They had some difficulty doing that against St. Louis. They know they want to set up and try to score before the defense is actually set, so it'll be important for Duquesne to get some quick baskets in transition. Now, you see Duquesne wearing those red jerseys. Those are not their normal home jerseys. Those are an alternate jersey. The reason they're wearing them is because tonight is red out night at the Palumbo Center. All the fans, I don't know why the cheerleaders don't have those red ultimate jerseys, they don't. They're nice enough to join us in the open though. But the, the fans all in those red t-shirts and you've seen this place not have this kind of atmosphere. Yeah, I mean, there's a resurgence here of basketball at the Palumbo Center, Duquesne University, and Ron Everhart is very, very responsible for that. He's had to deal with some difficult issues and we'll talk a little bit about them as we move on. But nonetheless, you can see the student body and the support of the community here tonight. Ninth ranked Xavier, the upstart Duquesne Dukes, 14 and six overall Duquesne is five and three in the conference. And two of those conference losses actually came in overtime, a 24 and 16 record here at the Palumbo Center, eight and three this season. Xavier, 20 and two, tying their best start in program history. And also eight and zero in the Atlantic 10, six and zero on the road this season. What makes them such a tough road team? Well, one of the things is they play great defense. I mean, when sometimes you're not always going to be able to score the ball as well when you go on the road as you do at home. You're just not as comfortable with the rim, the surroundings. Maybe you get distracted by travel. But if your defense is solid, steady, predictable, you're going to win more than your share of games on the road. 26 and 21 on the road under Sean Miller, but this season six and oh which is among the best in the nation you take a look at ron everhart who came into a program that was three and 24 before he got here looking to send them to their second consecutive winning season we're underway love in the backcourt hands off to the freshman point guard holloway and xavier gets it started i had a chance to watch xavier play temple the other night and again they're so hard to scout because they have four or five guys that can hurt you a lot of different ways. Anderson can hurt you inside, and he puts Xavier on the board first. And how about the passing of Jason Love? Terrific interior passing. I love to take experienced guys on the road. They can take a crowd out of the game because they just are solid. They're kind of uh, under control emotionally. They don't get hyped up by the crowd or sometimes by the officials. And I think Sean Miller really appreciates the depth that he has on this team, and you'll see some quiet confidence in the way he's coaching his team tonight. And when you play the kind of schedule that Xavier does in the non-conference, it's hard to get intimidated by any venue you go into in the Atlanta. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, they played uh, Duke in a neutral court, but outside of that, they played just great basketball. Some early wins in Puerto Rico against Memphis. They tested themselves on the road against Virginia. See Duquesne trying to double up around the perimeter. Holloway walks as he goes through the lane. Well, Holloway is the one inexperienced player on the court right now for Xavier, the lone freshman, and he's learning. He's certainly getting better with each game. You don't generally see those kind of mistakes with some of the upperclassmen. Holloway had a rough last game against Temple Thursday night. No points, three assists, and five turnovers. Point guard, the one position that's been a bit inconsistent for the Musketeers. Clark racing through the lane. That's a free release on a bucket. What an explosive move to the basket by Bill Clark. You're going to see Duquesne set a lot of ball screens. Xavier's going to have to help out on those screens, but Clark had a step on his man, and there was no stopping him when he got in the paint. 
crowd really fired up in the early going here in Pittsburgh. Raymond with duty on him. A lot more size. Double team now with Jackson and duty tied up. No jump ball is called. Holloway has to fire away. Beats the shot clock. Doesn't get it to go though. And that's over the back of the well, I love the athleticism of Derrick Brown. I love his intensity. Ron Everhart, however, has to be happy with his defense there. What you notice, and we talked about this before we went on air, is the trapping. You're going to see Duquesne trap ball screens. They did a terrific job that time taking Xavier out of their half-court offense. In shoot-around, it was all about working on that double team, the trap from Duquesne. And for Xavier, it was about getting rid of the ball quickly when they are double teamed. Jackson feeds Clark. Saunders lost the handle, gets it back. Misfires to Jackson. Raymond dives on the floor. It's loose, though, and Saunders comes away with it. A three. Good. Duquesne loves to shoot the three. That's going to be important for Xavier to try to take that away, especially to make Duquesne put the ball on the floor before they shoot the three. Bill Clark fouled out against St. Louis on Wednesday night. His presence was certainly missed at the end of that game. Five early points, an early steal for Damian Saunders. Good feed ahead to Jackson for the clutch. Great pass by Saunders and a terrific finish by Aaron Jackson. Right now, Duquesne is playing with tremendous confidence, poised at both ends of the court. The past few games, they had not gotten those easy buckets in transition. Certainly a good sign for the Dukes to get one. Yeah, and it all started with their defense. Look at how aggressively they're trapping the ball in the low post. The double team pays off as Saunders comes away with the rebound. Bolding to the fire. Holloway pushes ahead and draws the contact. Well, that's one of the disadvantages of shooting the ball quickly. Duquesne wants to take an open three if they have it. However, that's going to lead to some what I'll call run out. Xavier will get some long rebounds and have an advantage as they push the ball down the floor. Three underclassmen check in for the Musketeers. Jamal McLean, Kenny Freeze, along with Dante Jackson. That's Jackson in the corner. Cross court. Raymond almost didn't see it. Holloway fired. Good. Nice stroke by Terrell Holloway. Nice passing in the half court by the Musketeers. Aaron Jackson in the top five in nearly every A-10 statistical category. Leaves way for Clark, who travels turnover Dukes. Well, Xavier gave Duquesne a little taste of their own medicine. They trapped that time a ball screen. Aaron Jackson did a terrific job, though, of recognizing it and getting rid of the ball quickly. And you see Duquesne going to put that pressure on Xavier in the backboard as well. Well, I think they're going to try to test Holloway. Terrell Holloway is going to have to be able to hand the ball with some full court pressure. The one thing Xavier has done negatively consistently throughout the season is turn the ball. Over. Yeah, and that was a concern, I think, of the coaching staff because they know that Duquesne is going to try to force an up-tempo game. And do exactly that. Preferably not have their star land on his back, though, at the end of the play. No, he's really struggled this year with some injuries to his tailbone, actually, and played injured a couple games. But, again, you're going to see Duquesne create offense on their defense. Here's Aaron Jackson going hard to the basket. Looked like he wanted to dunk the basketball, but it was taken out of the play by Holloway. Aaron Jackson coming off a great game where he played 45 minutes against St. Louis and finished with 29 points. We mentioned earlier the numbers for Jackson, third in the A-10 in assists, also climbing up the Duquesne rankings in assists, and he rattles home the first free throw. 29 points on Wednesday night for Jackson against St. Louis, and he hit a buzzer beater. Down the stretch, it was all Jackson. You don't see that 430 career assist, fourth in school history, but you don't normally see the guy that's one of the best passers in the school's history also leading his team and scoring at the same time. Here's Duke. this full court pressure, Ryan. You're going to see more of this. This is where I think Coach Ron Everhart is just going to try to test Xavier in terms of how they're going to handle the pressure. Duquesne already with a couple early steals and four points off the fast break thanks to those free throws. Skip pass to Raymond. 
in and out. Good oh, finish from McLean coming in. Well, McLean did that successfully against mm -hmm. Temple the other night. That's something Duquesne's just going to have to be conscious of. They're trapping the basketball, so it's going to leave somebody open. Clark in the corner. Saunders. Next. Five-point Duquesne lead in the early going. Well, Saunders showed no hesitation. I thought he was a step too far beyond the three-point line. He was fairly well guarded. It's not often the guy who plays five for you will have 64 three-pointers attempted, but Saunders can hit it from beyond the arc. Well, that, that's really the issue here. Duquesne plays primarily four to five guards, depending on how you want to categorize this. Ron Everhart likes what he sees from the Duquesne Dukes early on. They lead by five. The Pittsburgh Auto Show is heading to the David L. Lawrence Convention Center from February 12th through the 15th, where kids 12 and under get in free. Go to pitautoshow.com for more information. The Steelers are Super Bowl champions, and Wilson has just released the Super Bowl champions game football to the public. This is the same football used in the Super Bowl with the addition of a third commemorative panel with the Steelers logo, the Super Bowl logo, and the final score of the game. Production is limited to only 5,000 individually numbered footballs. Get yours for just $129.95 plus shipping. To purchase this historic football, go to spikefootball.com or call 1-866-280-BATS. For a better quality of life, Steubenville, Jefferson County, Ohio. Steubenville! When FSN Pittsburgh needed to furnish our new office space, we relied on the professionals at Mount Lebanon Office Equipment and the All Steel Collection. With our over 13,000 square feet of office space, we had extensive needs. And Mount Lebanon Office Equipment proved it was head and shoulders above the competition. For expert space planning, design, and the best in office furniture, call Mount Lebanon Office Equipment at 412-344-4300. When it comes to sports collectibles, Baseball Card Castle in Cranberry Township has it all. Looking for autographed balls? We have over 500 available. Sports cards? Over 6 million in stock. Baseball Card Castle, beside Grand Central Hobby on Route 19, one mile north of the Turnpike. Hey, Nate, what are you doing here on the Sports Beat set? Getting ready to soak up that warm Florida sun. Pirates baseball returns this spring on FSN. Hey Stan, do you mind blocking my rays? The Panthers are on the prowl, and FSN is feeding your basketball frenzy. Catch Peril.com's Panthers Weekly, Thursdays on Severin on Sports Beat. Taking a look at the A-10 standings back here at the Palumbo Center in Pittsburgh. Xavier right now on top of the conference, 8-0. But you look at those Duquesne Dukes in fifth place, 5-3 and three of the conference. We mentioned earlier, too, two of those three losses came in overtime, one on a tip-in at St. Joe's. Certainly, Duquesne has room to move up. And when you look at the preseason, this was not an expected place in the standings for the Dukes, who were picked to finish 12th. Yeah, with so many new young players, Coach Ron Everhart, has to be, I think, thought of as a coach of the year right now for the job that he's doing. When you, you look at this team, they were picked preseason number 12. They're right now tied, really, for fourth in current standings, and he's just done an impressive job. He did it last year, and the team, with a bunch of new guys, is doing very much the same thing this season. Bowling, knifing through, forgets the basketball. Redford loses it as well. It skips out of bounds to Xavier. And one thing you saw early on there, Saunders, trying to go left at the top of the key. Sean Miller all, all work out long today, stressing to his players. Saunders can only go left when he's isolated at the top of the key. And yeah. Freeze looks like he's playing him that way. Well, you know what? Xavier only had one day to prepare for this game. And I was concerned with Dave, Xavier having to travel to get here, whether or not they would really have time to break down th their, their scouting plan and be ready for really what Duquesne's going to put on the court here tonight. That time it was Freeze who was put on the court thanks to the poor pass by Brown. And once again, Duquesne forcing turnovers from the Xavier Musketeers. Well, Duquesne does a terrific job of anticipation. Look at the trap on the basketball. Duquesne wants an up-tempo game, and they're going to make it happen as a result of how they play defense. Bill Clark has the crowd fired up. He has eight early points. Duquesne, three of four from downtown. 
so far in the early going. They were just 5 of 19 all game versus St. Louis on Wednesday night. But they're getting their shots before the defense is really set up. You talked about that St. Louis game. St. Louis really defended the ball hard. Here you have too much space between Clark and number five, Derek Brown. And you can see how fired up these two game players are. They want to make a statement here tonight in front of a packed house. They want to let people know that they're in contention to be one of the better teams in this conference. And it's really kind of inspiring to watch when you think that these are so many young guys, guys who've never been here before. Fifth youngest team in the country by average age at the start of the season. Eight scholarship freshmen for Duquesne. And you took a look at those three-point numbers. This is a team that averages 24 three-point attempts a game. They weren't able to get them off against St. Louis, and they have so far tonight and made them as a hand check's called on duty for the foul. And for Duquesne, I would think, John, to have confidence against a team like Xavier, you have to get off to this kind of a fast start, right? Yeah, I think it's really helpful to get off to a good start. I know that Coach Sean Miller was concerned about getting off to a good start, and certainly they didn't do that against Duke and fell behind very quickly. But this is an experienced team, and he has so many weapons, so many guys who can come in the game and give his team a spark. It's going to be a long game. Duke has to, uh, Duquesne is going to have to play this well for an entire 40 minutes to come out of here with a win. Freeze. Working on Saunders. Seven foot on 6'7", and he gets the tip in not to go on the second try. Oh, Clark was called for the travel before the shot. That was the, the one-arm travel call from the official, and nobody knows exactly what's going on, but a travel was called at Xavier Basketball. Clark tried to get his man in the air, did, but shuffled the feet before he could get it off. Well, here's this full court defense here, trying to play sometimes trapping full court pressure, other times just good pressure on the ball. Anderson, usually gonna play down low, try the dribble drive, that's what's top. Redford, prolific three point shooter. Now Anderson forces his way in. Loose ball to Anderson. Strip. Bolden comes away with it. Kick to Jackson. Duquesne 5-10. I'm just amazed at the number of transition baskets so far by Duquesne. And a charge. Bill Clark, the most intense player on this Duquesne squad, always willing to hit the floor for the Dukes. Duquesne has just gotten the ball out over half court quickly. They're filling the lanes and they're making good passes and they're able to finish. They're converting on the offensive end. But again, I'm just not sure if Duquesne can keep this up, but they're playing probably as good as 10 minutes here, seven minutes, seven and a half minutes, as we've seen all season long. And an 8-0 run over the past two minutes for the Duke. Sean Miller said it very directly in shoot around. We turn the ball over, we will not win tonight. They have six turnovers. Why Duquesne keeps doing that. The Bolding is only a freshman, but he's playing like an upperclassman right now. Which Ron Everhart is getting really upperclassman like play out of all these young guys. The Xavier leader, BJ Raymond, gonna check back in. Ron Everhart clearly thrilled with the performance thus far. Duquesne out to a 13-point lead in 11 0 run. And they're four or five from downtown so far. You saw Bolding hit that three. He was 0 4 from beyond the arc against St. Louis. And you always have to worry about a freshman's ability to bounce back confidence wise. Yeah, it seems like Duquesne's been able to do that, though. And Raymond's the guy who can get Xavier going on authoritative fist bump after the bucket. Raymond's coming off a terrific game where he shot five for 11 from threes, 24 points against Temple. Kind of expect that out of your senior. Snuck into Bolden, who finishes? How about the pass from Bill Clark? Duquesne is passing the ball superbly. They're keeping their head up. I think they play off of Aaron Jackson. They see how well he sees the court. And you're seeing the same kind of play out of these young forwards. Hand check called against Saunders. Foul against Duquesne. It'll stay with Xavier. Talking with athletic director Greg Amodio about Ron Everhart yesterday, and he said the one great thing about Coach Everhart is he doesn't complain about what he doesn't have. We need this, we need that. 
He's a blue-collar, Pittsburgh-type guy who just makes sure he's going to get the job done, his team getting the job done in the early Well, you know, I thought he said something interesting as we passed him in the hallway. He said, he's a low-maintenance guy. <laughs> I don't often hear that coaches are called low-maintenance. <laughs> you see the turnover by Xavier, seven now so far in the early going. Jackson right to the hoop. Eight of nine, nine of ten. Sean Moore is going to take a timeout. Now you got to keep in mind, Duquesne is playing fantastic basketball against one of the best defensive teams, not just in the Atlantic 10 of the country. You talk about the streak Xavier's been on. It's a lot having to do with their defense. Look at how number one Aaron Jackson turns the corner and there's not a blue jersey in his path. He just accelerates, gets past the defender, and he's just able to finish. Now there he's mismatched clearly on Jason Love, who plays the five for Xavier when Freeze isn't in the game. What is Duquesne doing right now to allow Jackson to get a mismatch? Well, I think more importantly, what is Xavier not doing? Xavier is not defending the screen on the ball well enough, so it's allowing the guy who uses the screen to turn the corner. Actually, what should happen is either the guy defending the screener has to step out into his path and reroute the man with the basketball. So a guy like Aaron Jackson can't get to the hoop. How about this number in the early going, John? 14 points off turnovers for Duquesne. Yeah, I mean, I think the coaches at Xavier were very conscious of the fact that they have a, a disposition to turn the basketball over. And one of the keys to the game was not turn the basketball over. So it's not obviously playing out the way Xavier wants it to, and I'm sure that Coach Sean Miller is going to try to make some adjustment here in, the, in this huddle. Now, it's still very early. We know Xavier has incredible firepower. Won't take much for them to get back into this game, but I, I wanted to ask you this at some point anyway, so I'll do it now for the trail by 14. Could this be a trap game of sorts? Quick turnaround from Thursday night against the tough Temple team, and then they go to Dayton for their next A-10 game on Wednesday. Dayton, a team who has not lost at home this year. Yeah, you could certainly say that, and you know, I'll, I'll throw one little thing in there. It's a bit of a disadvantage of having to play a league game on the road with just one day's rest. But nonetheless, I mean, this is probably one of the most experienced teams in the conference, and Xavier is, is really a hardened team. I mean, they're you wouldn't expect them to let up in any which way. You could see the pressure frustrating the Musketeers thus far. Holloway, the freshman point guard, feeds to Raymond. Whistle away from the ball. You know, more than Xavier not playing well, and you could credit, you know, the turnovers are, are, are focused on that. I'm just going to say Duquesne has played exceptional basketball. And the scoreboard reflects as much. Duquesne up on top of Xavier, 24-10. to 10. FSN Pittsburgh. We are the region's only sports network that delivers what fans are most passionate about. Live home team games. The result is the ultimate sports viewing experience with a goal to be the fans' first choice for sports. FSN Pittsburgh covers the Pirates all season long. From the first pitch in spring training to the final out in the fall. Plus, we're with the Penguins all season long. From the first faceoff in Mellon Arena to the final goal of the season. And from the first day of training camp, no one covers the Steelers locally like FSN Pittsburgh. Highlighted by exclusive live coverage of the Mike Tomlin press conference and telecasts of three preseason games. If you love regional college athletics, FSN Pittsburgh brings you Pitt, Penn State, West Virginia, Duquesne, Robert Morris, Lehigh, Lafayette, and Cal Hugh. FSN also underscores its focus on live community-based events with 15 local high school football games, including the WPIAL Champions from weekly coaches interviews to pre and post game analysis sports fans know and trust our team of sports experts without a doubt FSN Pittsburgh is the primary hub for regional sports we reach more than 2.3 million homes across Pennsylvania Ohio West Virginia and Maryland with over 2,000 hours of live local sports programming when it comes to regional sports coverage viewers know where to turn FSN Pittsburgh John Griffin with you at the Palumbo Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Duquesne out to a sparkling start. 24-10, they lead Xavier. And when you talk about the Dukes and the success they've had recently, you go right to their head coach, Ron Everhart. Well, look, as long as Ron Everhart has the lead, and right now it's 14 points, we're going to keep talking about him and the job that not only he's done here at Duquesne, but pretty much everywhere he's been before this. 
Had a lot of success at Northeastern, McNeese State. 15 years as a head coach, very good player of Virginia Tech. And here you can see some of his kind of travels before he got to Duquesne and tried to revive this program, Tulane VMI. I mean, he's been around, but he's a very, very stable guy, and I think that's what he's brought to this club, stability. Turned around McNeese State, turned around Northeastern, turned around Duquesne. Xavier trying to turn the scoreboard around, coming out of the timeout. Raymond. Oh! On the help, still gets the bucket to go. DJ Raymond excessively pumping those fists, trying to give his team some energy and put some points back on the board. Well, Raymond can put the ball on the floor. He can beat his man off the dribble. Now, the Duquesne folks are unhappy because they thought Bill Clark had established position under the basket, and B.J. Raymond should not be allowed that basket, should not be at the foul line. There should be an offensive foul going the other way. B.J. Raymond's going to be a guy that can get Xavier back into this game. Raymond now with five points. This is the free throw. Back at the A.J. Palumbo Center here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ryan Rucco and John Griffin with you for a beautiful display by Aaron Jackson and Duquesne thus far in this game. Jackson has 10 points, and the Dukes are out to a 14-point lead. And a great pass by Bolding. You know, one of the things that Ron Everhart talks about is the fact that his team is unselfish and how well they distribute the basketball. He was unhappy in the St. Louis game because too many of those baskets didn't come off passes. That one did as Dante Jackson drains it. Xavier actually three of four from downtown so far in this game. It's the turnovers that have really killed the Musketeers. Jackson falls, but draws the contact. Right now, Jackson putting a lot of pressure on the defense, particularly off of these ball screens. He'll come off the screen hard, try to turn the corner and get into the lane. Love in, Jackson out for Xavier. Lewinson takes the floor with Saunders headed to the bench for Duquesne. And that's one of the things Ron Everard talked about, getting Lewinson some more minutes to keep Damian Saunders and Bill Clark fresh, because, John, they're always playing undersized down low. Yeah, Lewison is a guy who gives him some good minutes. He did a good job, actually, against St. Joe's on Ahmad Nivens earlier this season. Clark whistles for another travel. Turnover, Duquesne, that's their fifth. Well, Clark doesn't like it. The fans certainly don't like the call. Coach Ron Everhart doesn't like the call. But I think a player just has to somehow adjust his game to the way the officials are calling it. So as he catches the ball, he's got to be much more conscious of when he pump fakes to keep that pivot foot still. Jackson controlling the point with Holloway out. Jackson started the first 11 games at point guard before giving way to the freshman Holloway. Raymond blows by Polding, gets swatted from behind. Duquesne controls. Bowling forced at that time, and then Jackson on the foul. Well, Duquesne just has to keep its composure. I like the way Bowling pushed the ball up the court, but he left his feet to make the pass, and then Aaron Jackson commits a foul. That's his second. He's going to have to stay in the game. There's still 10 minutes to go in the first half. He cannot afford to get his third foul here in the first half. Going to have to be very careful because a third foul in this first half would surely mean he'd be on the bench for the remainder of it. And I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Ron Everhart gets him out of the game. At least sits for about five minutes here in the remainder of the first half. Raymond in the corner with Lewinson. Much quicker than Lewinson. He tries to bounce it to Love on the block, forces it up. Oh. Good tip in from Derek Brown. He's good for one or two of those games. Yeah, terrific. And you know, you're gonna see him probably slam some of those weak side offensive rebounds. He had a couple authoritative put back dunks against Temple on Thursday night. Walking high right highlight reel, that's for sure. Another freshman guard, Eric Evans. A lot of young players in this game who will receive significant minutes. Evans takes Redmond right to the bucket. Eric Evans, 5'11", but 195 pounds. A converted football player. He's got that big body low to the ground. When he puts his shoulder down, it's very difficult for anybody to stop him as he goes to the basket. 
Take a look at the points in the paint. Duquesne leading 14 to 10 in that as Raymond gets free for the dunk. Well, one of the few half-court miscues by Duquesne's defense. Good recognition there by Xavier to take advantage of the open man under the basket. Lewinson, handoff to Jackson. Mismatch on low again. Folding. Got it. Boys for Bolden, who was 0-4 last game, and Bill Barton, the associate head coach for Duquesne, was worried a little bit about Bolden's confidence heading in today. He's got plenty of confidence. Yeah, big-time recruit, really committed out of high school to Louisville. Went to prep school. Certainly happy to end up here at Duquesne. Brown will shoot a pair. After the foul on B.J. Montero, there's Bolding with that beautiful stroke. Yeah, just a lot of strength in his legs to be able to rise up, and that was another two, three feet beyond the three-point line. Derek Brown whispers he might leave for the NBA after this season. This is off front rim. Terrific data. C.J. Anderson, Kenny Freeze, and Terrell Holloway check back in with Xavier. See how Brown has expanded his offense this season. Yeah, not just in terms of number of points scored, but his ability to score away from the basket. In fact, everybody would kind of joke about the fact that he had so many dunks and, and wouldn't in any way compare to the number of three-point field goals that he's made. He actually has just about as many three-point field goals this year as he does have dunks. Over his first two seasons, more than 50% of his field goals came via the dunk, as you see how well Duquesne has been from the field so far. Today. Yeah, that's uh, unconscious. I mean, it, it really, the question is, how and, and how long can Duquesne keep this up? 10 on the shot clock for Saunders. Around freeze, tried to get it to the open man down low, Montero, out of bounds, and it will be Duquesne basketball when we get back. They lead by 11 over ninth-ranked Xavier. Hi, I'm Quick Mick from Mix North Hills Chrysler Jeep and Mix Superstore. This just in, if you're looking to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, you'll save money at Mix. But selected vehicles have a lifetime warranty and great gas mileage. Experience the Quick Mick factor. Save time, save money when you buy at Mix. Come see us today on McKnight Road or Robinson Township. When you buy from Mix, you're in the driver's seat. It took more than 40 years, but Steelers founder Art Rooney finally won his first world championship. The Steelers won their first Super Bowl, Super Bowl IX, in 1975, where the Minnesota Vikings' purple people eaters were no match for the Steel Curtain. Dwight White scored the first points of the game with a safety. Game MVP Franco Harris racked up 158 rushing yards, more than the entire Minnesota team. To learn more Steelers football history, visit the Western Pennsylvania Sports Museum at the Heinz History Center. Let's go get lunch. All I have is five bucks. That's great. We'll go to Arby's and get a full meal. A full meal for five bucks. Yeah, any Arby's toasted sub, curly fries, and a drink. Yeah, right. You get all that for five bucks. I'll marry a goat. <laughs> She's hot. The Arby's $5 toasted sub full meal deal. Any of our four delicious toasted subs, curly fries, and a drink for just five dollars. So good it'll have you saying, I'm thinking Arby's. John Griffin with you at an excited Palumbo Center. Xavier right now trailing Duquesne 31-20. Sean Miller, the head coach of Xavier, has really turned this program into a national powerhouse on a consistent basis now. And you look where he is in only his fifth season on the all-time ranks in Xavier history. Great legacy at Xavier. Pete Gillen over 200 wins. Skip Ratzer almost 150. And Sean Miller in five seasons, well over 100. Last year, in fact, had 30 wins in a season. So he's certainly fitting into what really is one of the best coaching traditions in the country. Thad Motto was the head coach. Sean Miller was his assistant. So when you think all the way back to the days of Bob Stack, Thad Motta, I mean, really a rich tradition at Xavier. Duty lets it fly too strong. 
And Miller signed a 10-year extension this past April, runs through 2017-18. That's never bad security for him. No, and a wise decision on the part of Xavier to lock up such a good young coach. I mean, there are a lot of people that would love to have Sean Miller as their head coach. Duquesne, despite their undersized, still leading with points in the paint. Brown goes outside the paint to nail that one. And that's what you were talking about before, the expanded game of Derrick Brown. Yeah, he doesn't just have to score off the offensive class or get some putbacks. I mean, he's now developed the game away from the basket. Montero gets swatted by Brown. And is he whistled for the foul? He is. So a couple of shots for B.J. Montero. By the way, that missed shot on the previous possession by Duquesne, their first miss in nine minutes. Montero going to shoot a couple. Kenny Freeze looks like he's shaken up after that play, grimacing on the Xavier bench as Sean Miller talks with him. Montero, a freshman who started a lot earlier this season and has seen his minutes diminish to the point that he didn't play any against St. Louis in an overtime game this past Wednesday, but Coach Everhart said he's going to see more minutes today as you take a look at Kenny Freeze getting looked at. Yeah, now Kenny Freeze really has had an amazing season for a freshman. And I thought he would be a difference maker in this game because of his size and he's playing now with much more confidence. But he looks hurt there on the sideline as he's being attended to. And Freeze just 0 of 2 from the field with one rebound thus far in the early going. See how long it takes him to get patched up and back into this game. Duquesne's lead in double digits again. They've led by as many as 14. Holloway, the leaner, blocked from behind, controlled underneath. Love can't finish, but he'll shoot a pick. Well, this is good execution in the half court by Xavier. They, they kind of give Duquesne a taste of their own medicine, a screen on the ball. And you saw number 40, 54, Oliver Lewison, trying to defend the drive to the basket. That left a mismatch under the basket, a guard trying to box out the big guy, Jason Love. It's just not possible. And you see Love hit the free throw. This was a guy who early in his Xavier career couldn't throw it in the ocean from the line, but he is just such a hard worker. He has improved his free throw percentage to the point that he's at 79%, and you see how many times Xavier makes their free throws compared to just trips to the line by opponents, and clearly that's a big difference in their scoring as the Aaron pass lands in the hands of Dante Jackson. That's one of my favorite stats, actually. I think as a coach, if you can get to the foul line or actually make more foul shots than your opponents have attempted, you're going to win an awful lot of games. Xavier, you're putting a lot of pressure on the other team's defense. And puts pressure on the rim with two hands. Xavier's as close as they've been since the fourth 1447 mark. Well, we talked about it the last time out. This game is going to tighten up because Duquesne is playing about as well as a team can play. And Xavier just has too much experience, poise, the road tested. I mean, they're not going to let this gap continue, especially going into the locker room at halftime. Clark draws the blocking foul on Raymond. Any surprise to you that Aaron Jackson checking right back in as he sees his team's lead diminish with him on the bench? Now you need that leadership on the court right now, especially with Xavier making a run. In spite of the fact that he has two foul shots, Coach Ryan Everhart knows the game is kind of at, at, at a tilting point, and he wants to get his best player back in the game. Clark will shoot a one and one. Gain the bonus. This is the front end, and Anderson the board for Xavier. Oh, found space, lost the ball. Who's going to get it? Duty for Duquesne. And Hustle, Duquesne again trapped the ball, left Love wide open. Love not able to handle the basketball. I actually thought he walked a little bit, Ryan. And there he's whistled for the block. Evans ran right into it. That's the eighth team foul against Xavier. It's going to be another one and one for Evans. Taking a look at this Duquesne defense that has forced quite a few steals. Early yeah, on. but you know what? They trap the basketball. Sometimes you need to rotate your players to the open man. That time they were a bit slow, giving Jason Love an opportunity to catch the ball on the block. 
Evans, 78% from the line this season. And once again, Duquesne misses the front end. A few missed opportunities that are hard to give up when you're playing a team like Xavier. Yeah, I mean, you almost have to play a flawless game. And for the first 10 minutes of this half, Duquesne played almost flawless basketball. Kick to the corner. Jackson misfires. Saunders tips the board to himself. Want to run. Jackson loses it to the arms of Anderson. A little out of control that time. Swatted from behind, but Anderson on the second chance. And suddenly a 14-point deficit has become a four-point deficit. And the Xavier contingent behind the Musketeer bench fired up. Sean Miller happy with the way his team's come back into the game. Well, Sean Miller never seems to lose his composure. I think he has a lot of confidence in his team. He relies a lot on his senior leadership. And I think Xavier right now doing a terrific job on the glass, getting second shots. Good drive to the basket by C.J. Anderson and able to follow up his own miss. And I think that's where Xavier's going to have many opportunities as this game unfolds to get second and third shots. They're deep. They have great size. Their players are multi-skilled. You can see that run over the last three minutes. Nine to one run. This is a good timeout for Duquesne. Ron Everhart just to settle his team down, go in the locker room with some kind of momentum. It's very kind of uh, demoralizing when you start out so well, you lose the lead, and you go into the locker room tied or, or even perhaps down. So they want to make sure they go in the locker room with a lead and build on the momentum going into the second half. Kenny Freeze, the freshman center for Xavier, has already headed to the locker room. Some sort of lower leg injury, it appeared. We'll wait an update on him. Clark goes baseline, fires to Jackson. Saunders alone. Nails it. Again, I give a lot of credit to the guy who makes that pass. Damian Saunders did not even have to put the ball on the floor. He was wide open. Give the credit to Aaron Jackson for seeing the court so well. That was Duquesne's first field goal since the 838 mark. Raymond can't get it to go. Swatted out of bounds by Duquesne. It stays with the Musketeers as Holloway and Brown check back in. Everhart, Coach Everhart for Duquesne, not happy with the lack of rebounding on that possession. Elquan Bolding comes and gets Eric Evans, a couple of freshmen changing places. Well, both teams, both coaches go to their bench frequent, and, and I think they get a lot of help from their bench. I mean, there's not a, a noticeable difference when either coach has to bring guys into the game. Jackson playing catch up behind Holloway. Had to be careful, though, already with two fouls in this first half. Redford will fire from there, and usually will hit the bowling sky for that ball. What a rebound by Bolding. He just elevated over B.J. Raymond. Dude. And the lead quickly back up to nine. Well, there's back a guy shooting with confidence. It's a self-made guy. Came into the program as a walk-on. Raymond tries to answer. Can't get it to go, and Saunders the board. Clark. Bam. Well, Duquesne wants to play at this pace. I mean, they want to make this 80, 85-point game. Even in the 90s would be to their liking. Derek Brown misses. Duquesne off and running again. Jackson. Cross court. Clark wanted the basketball. Coach Ron Everhart at one point had a platoon system. He doesn't do that anymore, but again, he just loves going to his bench. And that time, a great cut off of a post player by Aaron Jackson. 10 0 Duquesne run. A 9 1 Xavier run. Answered with the 10 0 run. Bill Clark has been hot from downtown, and so the Dukes. They lead by 14.
Looking for a little excitement? The Pinball Shop has just what your home needs to complete your game room. Over 100 games fill their showroom. Jukeboxes to classic arcade video games. Foosball to air hockey. Slot machines and the best selection of pinball machines that you'll find anywhere. Check out the wide variety of games at pinballshop.com or call us at 440-779-5410. When people are injured in accidents, they may be overwhelmed and confused about what to do. Here's some quick answers to questions we often hear. Do I need to call a lawyer immediately after an accident? Yes. Is it true that most cases never end up in court? Yes. Can I trust the insurance company's settlement offer? Absolutely not. How much is my injury claim worth? For that answer, you'll need to contact us for a free legal evaluation. So if you're hurt in an accident, trust Edgar Snyder & Associates to help you. For a free consultation, call 1-800-94-EDGAR. Picture yourself at Westminster College. Westminster is small by choice. This means you will receive the personal attention you deserve. Westminster is ranked as one of the best liberal arts colleges in the country and is a national leader in graduation rate performance. Our 98% placement rate means Westminster graduates are in demand. Schedule a visit to learn more and visit us online to see if you qualify for up to $76,000 in Westminster Merit Scholarships. Succeed at Westminster College. This game will feature Xavier's B.J. Raymond, who has developed into a key contributor to the Musketeers' success this season. We'll also revisit all the first-half highlights and stats and take a look at the out-of-town Atlantic 10 scores. That's coming up at the half. Right now, Duquesne leading Xavier 42-28. to What about the contrast in styles between these two teams, John? Well, it's interesting. Duquesne wants to win games because they outscore you. Xavier wants to win games because they hold you to a season low. And you can see that Xavier is holding their opponents to 63 points a game. But right now, the scales tipped in favor of Duquesne. The pace of the game is to their liking. They have 42 points so far, and yet we haven't reached halftime. A lot of points before the half. Matches their biggest lead, 14 does. And Duquesne, 9 of 9 on two-pointers so far in this game. A lot of those bucks have been in transition. Yeah, and partly due to the fact there's terrific passing. Duquesne is doing a great job of spotting open players. Derek Brown decided to do it himself that time. So athletic, able to force the foul. And Brown will shoot a pair. Damian Saunders whistled for his second personal. 19 foul against Duquesne. What does Xavier have to do to get back in this game, John? Well, I think they're going to have to grind it out possession by possession. And I think they have to do it at both ends of the court. They have to get good shots offensively. They have to get second shots and take advantage of their side. Duquesne is gambling on defense. So Xavier has some opportunities, but they're not necessarily taking advantage of it. And then on the defensive end, they're going to have to do a better job of defending the drives, the dribble drives, particularly off of the high ball screens. Saunders comes away with his fourth board for Duquesne. Lewinson gets ready to check in for the Dukes. Saunders will fire. Around and out. Brown the rebound for Xavier. Because Duquesne does not play with a post player, it's really creating some mismatch problems for Xavier. Too many steps that time for Derek Brown. Good deed from Bill Clark. Yeah, Jason Love actually has to come out of the lane and play a forward, and he's not necessarily used to doing that, so it almost neutralizes Jason Love's ability to play around the basket. And when you're down by as many as Xavier is, it, is it harder for them to slow the game down as much as well? Well, you really don't want to slow the game down, but at the same time, you don't want to play out of control. That time, Clark a little out of control, but he draws the foul. And Bill Clark having a wonderful first half. 11 points, three assists, and for a guy who fouled out and is perhaps the most intense player on this Duquesne team, he's got to be very pleased with the effort he's put forth so far in the first 18 plus. Yeah, Bill Clark it really is playing beyond his years. There were points in time this year where he kind of struggled with his confidence, but 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 not right now. He's a very talented swingman. Played prep basketball from the Worcester Academy. Came from Oak Hill. But he's creating some matchup problems because Duquesne is spacing out the court. They're giving a guy like Bill Clark, 
the ability to put the ball on the floor, and if you don't guard him close, he's going to take that three. He's taken over 100 threes so far this season. The only thing Duquesne not doing well so far this game is free throw shooting, three of eight from the stripe thus far. And at a 13-point lead, that stat can be easily eclipsed by the positives, but against the Xavier team, you never know when that might come back to haunt you. Brown forcing it up. Better looking pass than shot, but a foul. Again, I'm just uh, impressed with the way Duquesne is playing their half-court defense. I think they're taking chances, but it so far hasn't hurt them on the offensive glass. I think Ron Everhart is keeping the team fresh by substituting pretty liberally. So nobody seems to be tired right now. There's an awful lot of spring in their step. Brown sinks the free throw. Now three of five from the line. Seven points for Derek Brown as Jason Duty goes and spells Aaron Jackson, who 12 points in this first half, a couple boards, a couple assists, but a couple fouls. Yeah, but only two fouls, and he was playing with two fouls for the last 10 minutes of the half. So Ron Everhart was able to get him quality minutes in the last 10 minutes of the half without picking up his third foul. That's what Anderson does so well, crafting the offensive glass. Almost got to another one, but instead it's Lewinson for Duquesne. Evans controls the point with the senior Jackson on the bench. Eric Evans, a guy who has to be reeled in from time to time by Coach Everhart. Coach Everhart gives him the green light. He knows he's going to make some mistakes, but he's giving him that space. Bill Clark is getting nothing but a green light tonight. Biggest lead of the game for Duquesne. It's 15 under a minute to go in the half. Only a sophomore. He's averaging about 13 a game, but he is playing well beyond anyone's expectations right now. 14 points for Bill Clark. Holloway all out of control. Can Raymond stem the tie? Sneaks between defenders. Molina, short. Xavier can hold for one. No need to. Well, Clark's going to peel back anyway. Almost a frantic pace on the defensive end by Duquesne. It's kind of taking Xavier out of its, its rhythm in the half court because I think they've run very good half court offense. I saw them the other night against Temple, and they were very efficient. But right now, out of sil uh, out of sorts with the way Duquesne is playing them defensively. Duquesne shooting 85% in this first half. Number went down a bit, but the scoreboard will not. At the half, Duquesne on top of Xavier, 45 to 30. An offensive explosion, much to the delight of these Dukes fans here on Red Out Night. Can you tell? 31 and 6, the Duquesne Dukes are when leading at the half under head coach Ron Everhart. This season, they are 10 and 2. A final thought from you as we head to break here, John. Well, uh, just an amazing first half by Duquesne. The question remains can they keep it up with the remaining 20 minutes? But an inspiring first half. I'm sure Sean Miller is going to try to get his team regrouped here at halftime, and I think you'll see a different Xavier team when they take the court after intermission. 81% from the field. That's what those Dukes fans watch in this first 20 minutes of basketball from their Duquesne squad. They lead Xavier by 15. Xavier's the ninth-ranked team of the country. Got an interesting second half in score. In this economy, we just can't afford a vacation. I can help, but you must say exactly what I say, exactly how I say it. Honey, honey, I've just got a... I just got a great deal on a four-star hotel at Priceline. There's never been a better time to... Name your own price. And save up to half off. Sweet lips. We can afford that. But why are you speaking that way? I guess I'm just speaking the language of the deal. Pittsburgh's premier suburb is in Ohio. Jefferson County, Ohio is just 36 miles from downtown and less than 30 from the airport. Jefferson County is the ideal place to locate your business. A productive and affordable workforce, low operating costs, and the largest development site in eastern Ohio. Contact theburb.org. Funding provided for by the Jefferson County Department of Job and Family Services. The
burb of the burg. The burb of the burg. Pittsburgh's premier suburb. Are you a woman looking for a car? Then take a look at SusieKnows.com. Step by step, Susie will get you the car you really want at the very best price. Let Susie do it. SusieKnows.com. How much sugar is in these energy drinks? Let's find out. While waiting, you should know. 5-Hour Energy contains zero sugar and only four calories. Its blend of B vitamins and amino acids can help you feel awake, alert, and productive for hours without the crash or jitters. The answer is 12. Over 12 teaspoons of sugar and 200 calories in these energy drinks. Zero sugar and four calories in 5-Hour Energy. There's a reason people choose 5-Hour Energy two and a half million times a week. 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. Introducing the big deals, the top picks of the day, the best deals on cars and trucks on the web. Hot off the showroom floor and right to your computer in real time. The big deals are here, but only at Barrel.com. Adam Zucker with you from New York here at the half between Xavier and Duquesne. The Musketeers led in part by Captain B.J. Raymond. Last year he was the best sixth man around and launched his legacy with two big three-pointers against West Virginia to get Xavier into the Elite Eight. Now Raymond is trying to make sure that he's remembered for more than just those two shots. Several frames cannot capture the madness. No more than several shots can carry a program. But written in the legacy of B.J. Raymond will be Sixth Man Turned Savior. I knew I, I wasn't playing my capability and my team needed me at that time and uh, I felt like I needed to step up, make a big shot or just get a big rebound, do something because our, our backs were against the wall. Scoreless for 41 minutes. Never did Raymond hit two bigger shots than an overtime of last year's Sweet 16 against West Virginia. That leaves Raymond open. That's his game. B.J. Raymond. Two seconds on the shot clock. Raymond for three. Oh! Hudgens! Scoreless in regulation. Has had a huge overtime. Never did it mean more to a program trying to establish itself nationally. It felt more than basketball, you know, it felt more than a basketball game. It's like an achievement, like, like we did something that no other team's done. We're trying to build Xavier legacy and we're trying to move on and uh, make this program uh, not be considered a mid-major anymore. The intensity of Raymond's excitement that night dissipated quickly in the Elite Eight. They never trailed in this ballgame. And the UCLA Bruins win it 76-57. That loss turned the page on seniors Stanley Burrell, Josh Duncan, and Drew Lavender. Raymond would no longer come off the bench. Now he was a leader. It was a change in the guard. And that as a senior and as a four-year player, it's uh, a huge responsibility to not only be the best you can be individually, but take the total responsibility of the team. Coming into this year, he already had the mindset that he was going to be a better leader. He had to be a leader because he was a senior this year, and I just think he stepped in, and he's done an outstanding job helping lead this team. You have to make sure that you're ready. Um, you have to make sure that the younger guys are ready. You have to know that uh, everybody's eye is always on you. BJ's competitiveness, you know, his consistency every day are the two things that even if he doesn't say much, that I, I think embodies who he is as a team leader. With his team poised for a run to the final four, Raymond wants his legacy to be written beyond just two shots. That moment was amazing. Uh, I think it was it's a big, bright spot in my career. But hopefully it's not the brightest spot in my career, though. Raymond and the rest of Sean Miller's team still with some work to do in Pittsburgh tonight. After the break, it's back out to Steel City for the second half between the Musketeers and Duquesne. Enjoy the rest of the game.
Back in 1944, Equipco made history by being the first Heister forklift dealer in the country. Today, Equipco is the region's premier provider of material handling equipment. And we're proud to announce the addition of two new brand names. JLG, the number one manufacturer of aerial work platforms in the industry. And Tenant, the nation's number one manufacturer of industrial floor cleaning equipment. Call Equipco today at 1-800-852-2343 or visit our website at Equipco.com. From your desktop to your laptop. From your home to where you want to be, it's time to get unlimited. Get Cricket Broadband and get fast mobile internet access at a price that fits your budget. Call 1-800-718-8715 now or hurry into a Cricket store today to get in on this great deal. For just 40 bucks a month, you get unlimited wireless broadband 24-7. And thanks to our all-digital 3G network, it's super fast. Call 1-800-718-8715 now. There's no contracts to sign. Just plug in and start surfing the net. It's that easy, it's that fast. Act now and get a USB modem for just 59 bucks. Call 1-800-718-8715. Call, click, or come into a Cricket store today. Cricket Broadband. Real unlimited, unreal savings. The Steelers won their sixth Lombardi Trophy, and Severin on Sports Beat was there every step of the way. From Jeff Harding's studio analysis to our team in Tampa to the Steelers' victorious return home, see why Severin on Sports Beat is the show where the pros go. The Penguins are home, but there's no reason to leave yours. The Sharks look to take a bite out of Pittsburgh's playoff hopes. But the Penguins plan to send San Jose's goalie straight into the tank. Coverage begins Wednesday at 6.30 on FSN. Welcome back to the Palumbo Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Duquesne out to a 15-point lead over Xavier, ninth-ranked Xavier in that first half. Ryan Rucco alongside John Griffin. You surprised by that first half, John? Amazing first half. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. Duquesne has shot over 80% from the field, over 70% from the three-point line. This is against one of the best defensive teams in the country. So mind you, I, I've not expected this coming into the game, and I'm certainly surprised. I'll be interested to see whether Duquesne can keep this up in the second half of this game. And, and Duquesne really struggled from beyond the arc against St. Louis on Wednesday night. They certainly have had no struggles from downtown tonight. No, just amazing. They're uh, 8 for 11 from beyond the arc, and the guy that's really most responsible is Phil Clark. He's 4 for 4. Mel Bolding has two threes, but I love the ball movement. I like the way these guys are finding men open on the perimeter. Take a look at those first half stats. A few numbers jump out at you. Look at the field goals for Duquesne. Yeah, again, you can see that 17 field goals. And how about foul shooting? Xavier has only five turnovers. I think Duquesne's doing a good job there. Points off turnovers, 14. And points in the paint is almost even, and I didn't expect that coming into the game. I thought Xavier would dominate the paint because of their size. And as far as Xavier goes, this is an experienced team. They're capable of coming back and erasing a 15-point deficit, but how do they do it in the second half? Well, they're going to have to grind it out possession by possession. They're going to have to... First of all, make a stand on the defensive end of the court. They're not going to allow or have to allow Duquesne to shoot the ball as well as they did in the first half. And then on the offensive end, they're going to have to pound the glass. They're going to have to get second and third shots. For Duquesne, what do they do? Do they keep doing the same thing, or do they have to do anything differently? Well, well, the question is, I mean, can they continue doing what they're doing? I don't think Ron Everhart wants to change anything. But I think in the locker room right now, he wants to tell his team, the game is 0-0. Forget about the score. You know Xavier's going to make a run here. And you're going to have to hold your ground, but you're going to have to play like the game is just about starting and forget about the fact that you have a lead. Well, Duquesne had an absolutely wonderful first half. They lead by 15. This crowd has been fired up. Will the emotion continue in half number two? We'll find out right now.
FSN Pittsburgh, the region's only sports network that delivers what fans are most passionate about. Live home team games. FSN Pittsburgh covers the Pirates all season long. From the first pitch in spring training to the final out in the fall. Plus, we're with the Penguins all season long. From the first faceoff in Mellon Arena to the final goal of the season. And no one covers the Steelers locally like FSN Pittsburgh. Highlighted by exclusive live coverage of the Mike Tomlin Press Conference and telecasts of three preseason games. If you love regional college athletics, FSN Pittsburgh brings you Pitt, Penn State, West Virginia, Duquesne, Robert Morris, Lehigh, Lafayette, and Cal Hugh. Plus 15 local high school football games, including the WPIAL championships. From weekly coaches' interviews to pre- and post-game analysis, sports fans know and trust our team of sports experts. When it comes to regional sports coverage, viewers know where to turn. FSN Pittsburgh. was the outstanding effort by Bill Clark in the first half. Yeah, he was just superior, just shooting the ball perfectly. Five for five from the field, four of those, four for four from the three-point area. I mean, look at that penetration, an explosive move to the basket, but his jump shooting was just superb. I mean, deep shots, some very well guarded, but extremely confident. His teammates are looking for him to get the basketball, and he's playing with a lot of emotion. I think his teammates are feeding off of that confidence of Bill Clark. The highest field goal percentage that Duquesne has ever had for a single game came back in 1973. It was 74%. Who knows if they'll be able to keep this up, but right now, an absolutely incredible 81% from the field the first half. Again, I, I, I'm you know, going to be tired of hearing myself say it, but <laughs> it's, it's against a really good defensive team. And uh, this is a team, Xavier, that prides itself on its defense. So I'll be really curious to see what happens here in the second half, and I'm sure Sean Miller is as intense a guy as you're going to find. An overachiever when he was a basketball player here in high school and college. And you can see trailing in the first half here hasn't happened in a long time. Certainly hasn't. What does a guy like Sean Miller say to his team after a half like that? Well, it's interesting. Sometimes as a coach, you kind of get into your team real hard. Other times you might tell them, just calm down, relax. They're taking their best shot. We'll, we'll, we're good enough to kind of grind this out and come away with a win. So you can go either way as a coach. You can lose it in the locker room or you can go in very kind of uh, calmly and be professorial-like. Original starting fives for both teams start on the floor. Saunders, poor pass, Holloway with Brown, takes it himself instead, and he'll shoot a pair. Well, Xavier loves that. Defense leads to offense mantra as well. We saw Duquesne do it in the first half, but here Holloway gets a, a foul in transition as a result of good half court defense by the Musketeers. Third foul against Jason Duty. The freshman Holloway puts home the first free throw. Holloway this season from the line. 
81%. Hey, terrific this year. He had a streak of 27 straight. A 10 of 10 against Memphis. The best foul shooter on the team. One of the best in the, in the Atlantic 10 at over 80%. So, of course, as we praise his foul shooting, he misses. That's just the way it goes, right, John? Yeah, unfortunately, he's keeping the mouth shut. You know, all his agent people will be, uh, you know, sending emails to the station now because of us. Raymond. Can't get it to go. Love inside. Whistle for the foul, and D.J. Raymond, who has been unconscious of late from downtown, now is one of five for the game, and Raymond headed into today 17 of 26 over his last four games. Yeah, and you know what? He's had four straight 20-point 20, uh, 20 games coming into this game, but I like the effort of the Musketeers on the offensive glass that time. Clark stepped out. Xavier basketball. All right, so that's two turnovers now and two possessions by Duquesne. That's not the way they started this game. Coach Ron Everhart wants his team to show some composure in the early minutes of the second half. And Duquesne actually has one more turnover than Xavier. Xavier with nine, Duquesne with ten. You wouldn't have thought that after watching the first half. But this time, Raymond hits. Duquesne is doing such a good job of trapping the ball in the low post that the Musketeers recognized that, got the ball out quickly, and found Raymond on the perimeter. Lead for Duquesne down to 11. Bolding. Short. Brown the rebound in the corner. That was a long attempt from Melquan Bolden. Derek Brown. Thought about it. Love will do it. Lefty hook. And Xavier has come out hot in the second half. Well, Jason Love has gotten so much better with that jump hook. When he catches the ball and he realizes he has an opportunity, he's looking for a shot now on a much more regular basis. And the other thing right now, Ryan, is Duquesne plays at such a fast pace that you're going to have enough possessions to get back into this game. They will take quick shots. Holding, passed up a quick look there. Jackson with eight on the shot clock. Down to five. Duty, catch, shoot, short, love the rebound, and Xavier looking to build on this run. Well, interestingly, Duquesne did not have an offensive rebound in the first half. Now, they didn't need it because they hardly missed a shot, but they're not getting second shots now, and they're missing some of these jump shots from the perimeter. Jackson finds Duty. He'll try again. This time, it's good. A lot of confidence in that stroke. Jason Duty just missed a shot from the same spot. But again, like a true shooter, like a guy who believes in himself, he took it again when he had the opportunity. Anderson with the pretty post move. He worked so well inside. Yeah, that was a good, strong move in the lane. Kind of an undersized forward, if you will. You know, But he has a knack for scoring, especially going to the basket. Saunders facing up, swoops in, and travels. Another turnover for Duquesne. They have 11 on the game and three already in the second half. Still with a 10-point lead, though, Ron Everhart has. Aaron Jackson with 12 points so far in this game. Bill Clark leads all scores with 14 for Duquesne. DJ Raymond heading up the scoreboard for Xavier with 10. You know Xavier's going to make a run. Everybody in this building knows that Xavier's going to make a run. And the question is, can Duquesne hold them off, can fight through it, play through it, and then establish the run of their own to win this game? Xavier out to an 8-3 run, if you want to call that. More of a, a steady job so far in the second half. McLean didn't do much in the first half. Draws the foul there. A couple free throws for Jamel McLean. Xavier will be happy to get some points on the foul line. They're a good foul shooting team. You can see the number of red jerseys around McLean when he catches the ball. One, two, three, four red jerseys in your screen. McLean makes a good, strong pivot to the basket. He's able to get to the foul line. McLean, just a 43% foul shooter, though, so far this season. See what we're talking about? Sean Miller was so disgusted with the free throw shooting towards the beginning of this year that he started a free throw club in which every Xavier player would either shoot 200 or 100 free throws a day since he scaled back to 
100 or 50, it looks like McLean might have to go back up to 200. Yeah, he'll be shooting 200, but again, I like the way that Sean Miller motivates his team with little incentives. Jackson with a pretty step back, but couldn't get it to rattle home. Anderson can drive, can spin, can hit. Well, he just has a knack for scoring, especially around the basket. And I think with guys like that, Xavier doesn't have to rely necessarily on the perimeter shot to close this gap. They've got it to single digits, trailed by 15 at the half. It's now eight. Clark gets his man in the air. Elects to drive inside, too strong for Saunders. Another Duquesne turnover, and the Xavier Musketeers are right back in. Yeah, it's one possession at a time, but I think Duquesne is helping now close this gap, as you mentioned, because of the turnover. Should Clark have tried to force it up once he got his man in the well, air? Well, you know, again, I, I saw him. He did a great job with his pump fake to get the defender up in the air, and you know, maybe a little bit more seasoned player would actually jump into him and get the opportunity to go to the foul line. Anderson has been asserting himself inside early. That time feeds it. The tip, no. Another tip from McLean, no. Swatted out of bounds. It'll stay with Xavier. Duquesne's lead have been cut to eight. A nice start for the Musketeers in the final 20 minutes of this game. Don't miss the gigantic Circuit City going out of business sale. Save an incredible 30% off Canon, Sony, Nikon, and other top brands of camcorders, digital SLR, and point-and-shoot cameras. Get total liquidation prices on everything, like 40% off all furniture and 30% off GPS units. Take 25% off all plasma TVs, all home audio, including Onkyo and Denon, and many office essentials, including printers, scanners, faxes, shredders, and more. Only while quantities last during the Circuit City going out of business sale. I was limited. Keeping track of everything was driving me crazy. With my old cell plan, I had to talk on their time, not mine. That's why I switched to Cricket. Now I'm unlimited for real. I stay connected with everyone, whenever, without worrying about how much it's going to cost me. Call 1-800-853-7415 now and for 35 bucks a month, get unlimited talk, text, and U.S. long distance. That's to anyone on any network 24-7 on our all-digital 3G network with no signed contracts and no overages. And right now, save $50 on these cool Samsung phones or get the full-featured Samsung specs for only $49.99. So why wait? Call 1-800-853-7415, go to mycricket.com, or visit a cricket store today and get unlimited talk, text, and U.S. long distance for just 35 bucks a month. Getting it together is a whole lot easier when you're unlimited. Call, click, or come into a cricket store today. Cricket Wireless. Real unlimited, unreal savings. The Steelers won their sixth Lombardi Trophy, and Severin on Sportsbeat was there every step of the way. Champs. See why Severin on Sportsbeat is the show where the pros go. Pirates baseball returns this spring on FSN. Penguins practice, intermission, postgame. FSN has the edge with Dan Potash. Dan Potash, the winning edge, only on FSN. Ryan Rucco, John Griffin back with you at the A.J. Palumbo Center in Pittsburgh, where Duquesne starting to make their run, have shaved a 15-point deficit to an 8-point deficit here at the beginning of the second half. And when you talk about Pittsburgh, talk about a homecoming for Xavier head coach Sean Miller. Yeah, what a great career he's had, not just at Xavier, but how about his high school and college career here at the University of Pittsburgh, over 1,200 points. I just love the way he played his game. I remember him as a high school player, over 700 assists, over 1,200 points. What a career here at Pittsburgh. This is kind of a homecoming. I saw his dad here earlier, got some family members in the crowd, but he won't be here that long. They'll be on a flight right after this game, headed back to Cincinnati. Let's take a look at Sean at Pitt. You know, the shorts were hiked up a little higher then. Yeah, I, I love his game. I don't particularly like the shorts, but I don't like anybody's <laughs> shorts as we look back at this footage. Terrific, terrific college player and had ability to score in spite of his size. You know what? The other thing is he hasn't aged much. Shot almost 88% as a free throw shooter, great player, and he's translated everything that he's learned as a player into his coaching career at Xavier. And his Xavier Musketeers have started off the second half hot. Raymond misfires. Duty the rebound. Ball 
day from duty. What does Duquesne have to do offensively to get back in rhythm? Well, I think, number one, take their time. they got to make more shots, turn the ball over fewer times. They're not going to get really second shots, so they're just going to have to make a high percentage. But earlier in the first half, they were able to get some baskets in the lane off of good dribble penetration and great interior passing. Bill Clark whistled for his third personal as McLean got position inside with red jerseys all around him, still was able to force the foul. And Clark, a guy who has run into foul trouble all season long, Duquesne needs him on the floor. Well, I think that Xavier's just going to try to wear out Duquesne on the backboard. They're just going to keep pounding it in the lane, try to commit, get Duquesne to commit fouls, and eventually go to the foul line and score points there. Duty fakes from a nearby borough. Yeah, that was Brad Redford distance. <laughs> Baseline, fix for Bolding. Great finish by Bolding. When you look at the, 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 I'll call them the small forwards of Duquesne between Bolding, Saunders. Uh, you know, there's a lot of good young talent here. And now Bolding doing it on the defensive end, hitting the deck for his team. The charge called on Love, and you know if you're a smaller player with a guy like Love coming through, that, that's going to hurt a bit, but that's a grinded-out gamer-type play by Melquan Bolden. Yeah, you have to do it when you play for Coach Ron Everhart. Guy I forgot to mention when I thought of these small forwards that the game was Bill Clark, who's having a hell of a game right now. Aaron Jackson finds Bolden. Lewinson sets the screen down low for Saunders. Like the patience right now in the half court of Duquesne. They weren't able to get some things in transition, but they're trying to execute here in the half court. Good ball movement. Right now, certainly they got the ball in the hands of the right guy in Aaron Jackson. He swoops right in for the finish. I think part of the game plan for Xavier was not necessarily to help out because Duquesne is such a good three-point shooting team. So that means that everybody defensively has to keep their man in front of them. Brown. It's just so hard to keep Aaron Jackson in front of you. And it's hard to keep Melquan holding from drawing charges, apparently. Another one, that ball against Derrick Brown. Xavier wants to go to the basket here. They just don't want to settle for the jump shot. You can see the strong move by Derek Brown, but Duquesne does a terrific job of stepping in front. And how about the acceleration of Aaron Jackson? He just leaves the defender behind him. And I think that Xavier's going to have to make a defensive adjustment and find somebody to help out. Three personal fouls now on Derek Brown as Bolding had it knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Duquesne. You know, Aaron Jackson said something interesting yesterday. He thought on the road, this young team against St. Louis Wednesday night was a bit exposed, and the road element kind of took away from their focus that the home crowd would help tonight. I think he was right so Yeah, far. I think they're very, very prepared, not just technically, but emotionally prepared. They're playing with a lot of confidence, and right now with some boys. Holding. Holloway got up high to that rebound. Dribbled it away off the foot of Saunders. And Terrell Holloway has been a bit out of control in this game. So I just lost the handle there a little bit. But again, he's the youngest player on the court right now for Xavier. And he's learning on the job. I mean, it's a tough challenge. And again, he's being play, playing with some very experienced guys that are going to help him along. And that's what happens when you're a freshman point guard. That's a tough position to come into as a freshman. Anderson. Gets swatted by Saunders. He had six blocks against St. Louis. Records another one there. Think Xavier's getting worried yet? No, I don't think so. I think, wait, wait. See what happens when we get to the 10 minute mark. Jackson. Very, very efficient half court offense by Duquesne. They don't get the basket in transition or an opportunity to get a shot. Sean Miller's going to take a timeout. Cannot be happy right now with the way Xavier is playing half court defense. A 6-0 run for Duquesne. They have been able to do it in large part thanks to Aaron Jackson. And every time Xavier has come back into this game, Duquesne has done a little something like this.
Hi, I'm Janine Nelson, and this is why I switched back to Comcast High Speed Internet. We were a happy, internet-obsessed family until our phone company lured us into giving their DSL a try. What happened after that was a total nightmare. Suddenly, our connection was really sluggish, which meant less internet, and less internet meant less happy. A lot less. I knew a quick call to Comcast would bring back the internet and the happy. I never realized how much my smile was affecting my income. I'm a waitress, and my teeth were so bad. I used to cover my mouth. I would never smile. But you can't get good tips that way. Aspen Dental showed me a payment plan that even I could afford. Now make no payments and pay no interest for 12 months on any dental or denture service. I smile, I flirt, and the single guys are paying a lot more attention to me. When I see you smile. Hi, I'm Quick Mick from Mix North Hills Chrysler Jeep and Mix Superstore. This just in. If you're looking to purchase a new or pre-owned vehicle, you'll save money at Mix. Plus, selected vehicles have a lifetime warranty and great gas mileage. Experience the Quick Mick factor. Save time, save money when you buy at Mix. Come see us today on McKnight Road or Robinson Township. When you buy from Mix, you're in the driver's seat. In Pittsburgh, Duquesne leads ninth-ranked Xavier by 14 in this second half. Xavier has a problem right now because the explosiveness of Derrick Brown is on the bench currently with three fouls. Well, this is what you love to have in the game right now because sometimes I think Derrick Brown's dunks are worth more than two points. I mean, this is a slam dunk highlight film. He's just a very powerful player going to the basket. No surprise that he's the slam dunk champion of the Xavier Musketeers. But he has to stay in the basketball game with three fouls. But Sean Miller is going to need him for the remaining 12 and a half minutes of this game. So he is back on the floor with Redford, Anderson, Holloway, and Raymond. Redford is a guy who could get Xavier back in a hurry as well. He could fill it up from downtown. Yeah, he's playing with a tremendous amount of confidence coming off a game where he had four threes. But interestingly, Derek Brown is the center on the court right now. He's the tallest player on the court for the Musketeers. Xavier deciding to go small to match up with Duquesne's quick. Yeah, a little, a little smaller, a little quicker. Brown almost had a replay-worthy dunk there, but was fouled from behind at the Palumbo Center here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ryan Rucco, John Griffin with you for this A-10 matchup between the ninth-ranked team in the nation, the Xavier Musketeers, and a Duquesne Dukes team that is out to a surprising 14-point lead. Well, I'd really like the change that Coach Sean Miller made with going with the smaller lineup. Brown misses the free throw, and how about Xavier today? Six of 14 from the line. Coach Miller, the moment, doesn't look concerned, but what ended up happening with the smaller lineup is Oliver Lewison was trying to play Derrick Brown away from the basket. Just not possible. Derrick Brown, just too quick with his first step, able to penetrate, get to the basket, draw a foul. Brown sinks the free throw. Xavier, by the way, who came out shooting hot in the beginning of the second half, doesn't have a field goal in over four minutes. Now. Well, they went through that stretch in the first half as well for about five minutes. Can't afford that if they're going to make up this ground. Down 13 with 12 minutes to go. In the corner, Saunders lets it fly. Long, bowling on the putback. Good hustle by Bolding from the weak side. That's something, again, you don't see Xavier typically do. Give up a second shot. Holloway pulls up from 15 and knocks it down. The boys there by Terrell Holloway to use that ball screen. He got to about 12 feet and very comfortably knocked down the shot. Duquesne slowed it down a bit in this second half in the half court. I think it's a wise move, Ryan. Good anticipation by B.J. Raymond. And again, that gives Xavier an opportunity to score as a result of good half court defense. Raymond has improved so much as a defender over his time at Xavier. And that time, a pretty finish by the freshman Holloway as well, who's showing some poise the past couple possessions. It'll be interesting to see the way Duquesne handles this because really they are more of a full court, fast paced team. The 
kind of getting into the uh, the tempo here, more of the Musketeers in the way they really like to play. What an effort by Saunders. He allows that miss. Look at Golding's guy in. And all of a sudden, Duquesne crashing the offensive glass. And Golding's undersized at 6'4", but he gives Duquesne another possession. We just saw him get an offensive rebound and put it back. This time, he wisely gets the offensive rebound and kicks it out. Lewinson still can't connect. Saunders called for the push-off. Ron Everhart can't believe it. Most people can't believe Duquesne still up by double digits. FSN Pittsburgh. We are the region's only sports network that delivers what fans are most passionate about. Live home team games. The result is the ultimate sports viewing experience with a goal to be the fans' first choice for sports. FSN Pittsburgh covers the Pirates all season long. From the first pitch in spring training to the final out in the fall. Plus, we're with the Penguins all season long. From the first faceoff in Mellon Arena to the final goal of the season. And from the first day of training camp, no one covers the Steelers locally like FSN Pittsburgh highlighted by exclusive live coverage of the Mike Tomlin press conference and telecasts of three preseason games. If you love regional college athletics FSN Pittsburgh brings you Pitt, Penn State, West Virginia, Duquesne, Robert Morris, Lehigh, Lafayette, and Cal Hugh. FSN also underscores its focus on live community-based events with 15 local high school football games including the WPIAL championship from weekly coaches' interviews to pre- and post-game analysis, sports fans know and trust our team of sports experts. Without a doubt, FSN Pittsburgh is the primary hub for regional sports. We reach more than 2.3 million homes across Pennsylvania, Ohio, West Virginia, and Maryland with over 2,000 hours of live local sports programming. When it comes to regional sports coverage, viewers know where to turn. FSN Pittsburgh. Ninth-ranked Xavier still trailing Duquesne by 11. He's starting to think, when are things going to turn around for the Musketeers? They have a lot at stake today, John. Well, you can see that an overall 11-game winning streak, and in the Atlantic 10, that's nine. But I think just as importantly, you're looking at a top-20 ranking that perhaps could be at stake. And interesting, the way he would set up the Atlantic 10, they could be just about tied with Dayton, setting up a great matchup on Wednesday night when Xavier and Dayton meet. Xavier with the third longest win streak in the nation right now. But it certainly is at risk. There's full court pressure by Duquesne. I like this to try to pick up the tempo a little bit. Anderson bounces to Brown. Thought about it after the jab step. Holloway working on the freshman bolding. And a five-second violation. Sean Miller is irate. And I don't think he's irate with the officials. I think no, he's irate no, he, with Holloway. He is, he is. Uh, certainly the freshman now is going to come out of the game. But Bolding does a terrific job of staying in front of Holloway. You can see how low Bolding gets. He's 6'4", but he's all the way down to Holloway's side, size at six feet. Sean Miller really wanted Holloway to penetrate and create something off the dribble. Instead, Holloway gets brought to the bench. Dante Jackson takes over, and Sean Miller is still fired up, screaming at Holloway. The freshman with a mental mistake there, and what do you do if you're a coach in that situation? I, I guess that's the way that, that he learns. Well, I think, first of all, he's a freshman. He's going to make mistakes. But I think Sean Miller also has a particular way that he wants his point guard to play because he was such a good point guard in his own way. And I think he's a terrific teacher. Now, Terrell Holloway, three turnovers, no assists. When you think of point guards, you certainly have to think back to the history of Duquesne basketball, some of the great, great players school history a guy that went on to the NBA what readily comes to mind is Norm Nixon guy that played professional basketball for the Lakers and finished his career with over 17 points a game and rewrote the record books in terms of assists almost 600 career assists here at Duquesne University Saunders whistled for a charge and it is Xavier basketball and that's a problem because that's the fourth foul on Damian Saunders as you take a look at Norm Nixon's jersey hanging from the rafters. Lewinson getting ready to 
check in for Saunders. He's in a dangerous position right now on the floor with four. Raymond's always dangerous from there. The paint is collapsing on drives and every pass to the post. So they're really just challenging Xavier to make enough perimeter shots. That time, B.J. Raymond wide open, nobody within an arm's length. Entry pass to Saunders into the corner. Good movement. Clark didn't take it. This time, duty will. And hit. Kane very willing to make the extra pass. You said Clark not taking it in the first half. He would have taken that shot. Duquesne in the second half now is moving the ball from one side of the court to the other. Found duty open in the left-hand corner. C.J. Anderson directing traffic with urgency. Gets the ball in the low post. As it kicked away, Saunders dives to the floor. Who's going to get it? Looks like Saunders and Raymond tied up. Jump ball, possession arrow, belongs to Xavier. And it's funny, in every one of Duquesne's shoot-arounds practices, Ron Everhard will scream with enthusiastic excitement whenever a player touches the floor because of effort like that. Well, you have to reward that. Saunders did a terrific job of getting on the floor. And I'll, I'll say the same thing. With B.J. Raymond, I'm sure that Sean Miller would say, hey, you didn't get on the floor quick enough. Saunders beat you to the ball. And Saunders diving on the floor despite his four fouls will take a breather on the bench. David Tice checks in. Shot clock at five. Jackson lets it fly. Uh, oh. Holden, another rebound. He has seven. Jackson feeds Clark. Again, passes up. Judy with the ball fake. I think Clark's doing a good job here in the second half of passing up the first shot. I mean, we saw him being much more aggressive offensively in the first half. Clark, triple team, draws the foul. You know, I'll go back to that ball that you saw loose on the floor. Coaches used to have a drill called roll the ball on the floor drill, and they'd roll it out, and two guys would run at top speed and dive on the floor and see who could get the ball first. And the guy that got it first, you know, he got rewarded. But there were so many players that got hurt in that drill <laughs> that most coaches banned it. Sounds like the Omaha drill in football. Now, was that, was that a drill that you... Uh, everybody did it. It started, okay. I think, with Bobby Knight, and then everybody that went to a coaching clinic adopted that drill. Jackson, trap, feeds Clark. That's a pretty feed with no finish out of bounds. It'll stay with Duquesne. The clock is starting to wind down here for the Palumbo Center. And ninth-ranked Xavier still trails Duquesne by 11. Pittsburgh's premier suburb is in Ohio. Jefferson County, Ohio is just 36 miles from downtown and less than 30 from the airport. Jefferson County is the ideal place to locate your business. A productive and affordable workforce, low operating costs, and the largest development site in eastern Ohio. Contact theburb.org. Funding provided for by the Jefferson County Department of Job and Family Services. The Burb of the Burg. The Burb of the Burg. Pittsburgh's premier suburb. I had a girlfriend who had been on eHarmony and was telling me about the caliber of person that she was meeting on the side. And at first I was just curious, like, let me see, if I do this test, you know, is it really going to peg my personality? And it was dead on. So I thought, well, you know, if they could read me this well with this test, let me see who they match me up with. So we met Josh and the rest is history. Log on for your free personality profile. See how eHarmony works. eHarmony.com. You see the players on the ice. Now get to know them off it. Get exclusive inside access for a behind-the-scenes look at the game's biggest stars. And the only place to get this close to the team is Inside Penguins Hockey. Tonight at 10 on FSN. College basketball is on FSN. The Robert Morris Colonials hit the hardwood for a doubleheader. Both the men's and women's teams look to knock off conference foe Sacred Heart. The Robert Morris doubleheader begins Thursday at 6 on FSN. Duquesne leads ninth-ranked Xavier by 11, under eight minutes to go before the game. The two players we keyed on were Derek Brown of Xavier and Aaron Jackson of Duquesne. We take a look at this in the spotlight. What's the number that jumps out to you, John? Well, first of all, Aaron Jackson's doing what we expected him to do. He's averaging 17 a game. He has 16, playing a good, solid, all-around game. 
The question mark right now, and a bit of a surprise is Derek Brown with eight points and five turnovers. That's a bit of a surprise. He's a very steady player. You wouldn't necessarily expect that of him. He's gonna have to pick it up here in the latter stages of the game. A little less than eight minutes to play. He picked it up with a block, but then Clark picked up the ball and put it in for two more. And right now, Duquesne just a little bit quicker to the ball than the Musketeers. I'm not gonna make any excuses for Xavier having played just two days ago and having to travel here because Duquesne is just playing a terrific basketball game. Foul on the floor. It's on Melquan Molding. That's his first personal. 17 foul against Duquesne, so now one and one for Xavier. And talking to people around Duquesne this week, they knew, John, that if they were going to win this game, they'd have to play a nearly perfect game, and Xavier would have to have somewhat of an off night. But clearly, Duquesne has played in nearly perfect basketball. Yeah, I think they have, and I, you know, I, I just don't want to take any credit away from Duquesne. And, and I think in some respects, they are making Xavier play this way. They're doing enough good things that they're giving Xavier trouble. How does Xavier overcome this deficit? Well, again, there's no quick fix right now. This game's going to kind of grind itself out unless Xavier can force turnovers, get some quick baskets, make some threes. I have a sense this game's going to go down to the wire. This is a Xavier team that already has 20 wins. They've won at least 20 in 12 of their last 13 seasons. Off to a 20 and 2 start. Had an incredibly difficult out of conference schedule. Came out of that 12 and 2. They're having some trouble with the Dukes tonight. Jackson in front of the Duquesne bench. Uses the tight screen. Races around Love. Once again, letting the shot clock wind down a lot more than in the first half. Down to eight. Jackson with the crossover, the split. Can't finish. Brown with the board. And Xavier can cut it to single digits. They've gotten as close as eight in the second half, and that's it. Trailed by 15 at the half. Marikini. Hand check called on Aaron Jackson. That's his third personal, 18th foul against Duquesne and one and one for Xavier. Well, you know what's interesting? We talk about all the young guys that are part of this Duquesne program. There's some young guys sitting on the sideline. Marikino Williams, transfer from Kentucky, and another guy that got injured early in the game, uh, early in the season, Rodrigo Pegau. I mean, Ron, Ron Everhart has good young front court players ready to fill in next year. The only guy he's going to lose, really, that's getting substantial playing time is Aaron Jackson. Raymond with 14 points tonight. Trying to cut it to single digits. He does. 61-52, Duquesne on top of Xavier. 6.35 to go. Second half from the Palumbo Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's been all Dukes throughout this game. Duty takes it. Tice takes it. Not a pretty looking shot, but a good offensive board by Jackson. And a smart play. Duquesne doing a good job of getting these offensive rebounds and resetting their half court offense. Tice, one bounce to Clark. Takes it. Letting the shot clock wind down some more. And of course, with the shot clock winding down, so too does the game clock. 5.50 to go. Jackson with nine on the shot clock. Finds Clark, takes the long three, spins inside, forces it up. No good, through the foul, Bill Clark. Well, the first half we saw Bill Clark toward Xavier from the perimeter. This time, he's making strong moves to the glass. A nice spin move in the lane. And again, he's able to draw the foul on C.J. Anderson. Clark with 16 points already today. Make it 17. Duke's just four of nine from the line as that one goes through. DJ, Bill Clark rather, has really stepped up his play in Atlantic 10 play as well, averaging six more points per game in conference play 
defense throughout the regular season. You know, Brian, I'm just very, very surprised and pleased with the way these young guys are stepping it up. Sometimes people say that when you get into the latter stages of the season, guys are no longer sophomores, but juniors, freshmen or sophomores. And Bill Clark's one of those guys that's playing like an upperclassman, like a junior or a senior and not a sophomore. Raymond Brown, also a threat from downtown. Raymond always is. Anderson at the elbow. Oh, sweet move oh. inside. Brown can't finish. Bolding can't collect. Redford has not fired in his second half. Holloway to Redford. Misses. Chases it down. Back out. High off the glass. Nice touch from Holloway, and it's an eight point. Duquesne lead. And good hustle there by Xavier to keep the ball alive, get a second or third opportunity to score. And I like the way Holloway came back into the game. Sean Miller kind of got into him a little bit, but this time he's back into the game, playing with some confidence, taking the ball hard to the basket. We saw 12 offensive rebounds for Xavier compared to six from Duquesne. Here's Tice. Out to Evans, the freshman with nine on the shot clock. Out to Duty, a long three. Xavier can get as close as they've been since the first half. Raymond does just that. No substitute for confidence and experience, and you're seeing all that with B.J. Raymond right now. The senior is stepping up. He's leading this team. He's playing with great confidence, coming off a great game against Temple, where he made five threes, and he just drains a huge one right there with four, a little over four minutes to go. B.J. Raymond. 18 points, always a threat from downtown, the number one three-point shooter in the A-10. Well, you didn't think that Xavier would just kind of go quietly into the night. I didn't. No, they, they, they just have too much pride in the tradition of this club, and you can see his reaction here. He's about as fired up as you can get right now, and he's going to try to motivate his team with a little bit over four minutes to go. Kane has gone three and a half minutes without a field goal. B.J. Raymond has blown up here in the second half. Has four consecutive 20-point games entering today. Was the first Xavier player to do that since David West. Raymond's having quite a senior year, and if Xavier's going to come back and win this game, the Musketeers going to rely heavily on B.J. Raymond. Yeah, and, and as much as anything else, it's emotional lift. I mean, this, this, right now, Xavier needs a bit of a spark. They have, they're on a bit of a roll and they have to capitalize. Can somebody answer for the Dukes? Saunders checked back into the game with his four fouls. Jackson zipping through the lane. Can't finish, foul on the floor. Three minutes and 55 seconds left from Pittsburgh. Beautiful Pittsburgh. Duquesne trying to hold on to the upset. They lead by five. It's good to get away. What is this? This is a travel napping, and I want you to stop wasting your money. We got a good deal. I could find a better deal than that in my sleep if I slept. At Priceline, you can name your own price and save up to half off on hotels. Mm -hmm. That's way less than the price we found. Negotiation accomplished. <laughs> Picture yourself at Westminster College. Westminster is small by choice. This means you will receive the personal attention you deserve. Westminster is ranked as one of the best liberal arts colleges in the country and is a national leader in graduation rate performance. Our 98% placement rate means Westminster graduates are in demand. Schedule a visit to learn more and visit us online to see if you qualify for up to $76,000 in Westminster Merit Scholarships. Succeed at Westminster College. Let's go get lunch. All I have is five bucks. That's great. We'll go to Arby's and get a full meal. A full meal for five bucks. Yeah, any Arby's toasted sub, curly fries, and a drink. Yeah, right. You can get all that for five bucks. I'll marry a goat. The Arby's $5 Toasted Sub Full Meal Deal. Any of our four delicious toasted subs, curly fries, and a drink for just $5. So good it'll have you saying, I'm thinking Arby's. 
This presentation of college basketball has been brought to you by Chick-fil-A. We didn't invent the chicken, just the chicken sandwich. A look of downtown Pittsburgh right now holding a very tight basketball game at the Palumbo Center. Duquesne on top of Xavier, 62-57, led by as many as 15 in the second half. Take a look at the game reset. Two timeouts apiece remaining for both clubs. 16 fouls on Xavier, eight on Duquesne. That means the Musketeers in the bonus. Duquesne, one Xavier foul away from being in the bonus. And Duquesne's played a couple close games as of late, but come out on the wrong end. Yeah, I'm just wondering just what their confidence level is as they come down to the last three minutes of this game. I think Xavier has the edge here because they're much more experienced. The Duquesne Dukes had lost two overtime games, close one to St. Joe's, obviously, and then recently to St. Louis. Has Duquesne got a bit too conservative in the second half, too? You know, interestingly, Ryan, they, they only have 17 points in the second half. They had 45 at halftime and only 62 right now, so they're playing at a much slower pace. Rebound Brown. Here comes Xavier, a chance to cut it a little bit closer. Anderson, given tons of space. Well, if you ask Coach Ron Everhart, would you want to be, uh, have a five-point lead with three minutes to go before the game started? He'd say, absolutely. I'd love to make this a three-point game and see what our chances are. Coach Sean Miller in the huddle right now. He just wants a good shot. All right, defensively, Coach Ron Everhart just wants to make a good defensive stand. Duquesne seeking their first win over a ranked team since 1997. And the last time they did beat a ranked team, it was against Xavier. And oddly enough, last time Xavier played at this facility, Xavier fell. 93-91 to Duquesne in 06-07. You know, we got into it a little bit there about Duquesne maybe being a bit too conservative. Seems like they've made a point to run down the shot clock and the game clock every possession instead of attacking a little bit more? Yeah, but it's interesting whether or not you can kind of keep that pace like they had in the first half going for 40 minutes. You can see this is the first sellout since December of 07. Over 5,000 screaming fans. It's just great to see it. what makes college basketball so wonderful at this time of the year, especially here to see the revitalization of college basketball at Duquesne University. Also the first sellout against a team not named Pittsburgh since 1994. Swatted away by Saunders. Third in the conference in blocks, that's why. Good anticipation. The Musketeers took a timeout. They wanted to get the ball in a particular place, but Saunders did a terrific job of changing the best laid plan. Saunders trapped. Time out. Duquesne or a foul before the timeout? Timeout awarded to Ron Everhart and Duquesne. They have one remaining. Saunders was about to be called for five seconds there. Well, that was really a foul on C.J. Anderson. You know, he was trying to keep the ball away from Clark, and he was aggressively pushing him away from the ball. And really, I, I think the official bailed out Xavier because the other official was about to call a foul on C.J. Anderson. And that's why Ron Everhart was upset going into that timeout. This season, you see Xavier has been wonderful in games decided by five points or less. Five and oh, Duquesne in games this close have struggled a bit. Nine and 18 under Ron Everhart. Well, I think Duquesne's just not quite as experienced, but these guys are getting tremendous amount of experience this year. The nine and 18, but they're learning from these experiences, and I, I just everybody's back. If you watch this team next year, they're going to be just a little bit better and a little bit deeper, especially taller around the basket. Duquesne needs a bucket. Jackson can't give it to him, but he gets the ball back, and he wisely takes it back out. Uncanny the number of times that Duquesne is able to get a second shot with smaller guys. I mean, Aaron Jackson is just not that big of a guy to be able to go in the lane and get a second shot. It was just a matter of time before Holloway was called for a foul there on duty. 2.08 to go in the second half. 
And Jason Duty will shoot a one and one. Duquesne leading by five. Just one point for the Dukes, though, in their last five minutes and 30 seconds as the sharp shooting Redford checks back in. 87% from the line so far this season for Duty. A crucial front end. Bottles. What a hard-working young man. He shoots the ball with a lot of confidence. His teammates respect what he's been able to accomplish. Ten points for the walk-on duty. And Duquesne leads by seven here at the Palumbo Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Ryan Rucco alongside John Griffin. A thrilling matchup here. Duquesne trying to pull off the upset. Derek Brown had other plans, and so did Damian Saunders, who will remain on the bench for the rest of this game. That is his fifth foul. All set up by the strong drive to the basket by Terrell Holloway. Holloway, since he was taken out of the game, has really changed the way he's played. He's penetrated to the basket, that time dumps the ball off the ground. Now, Damian Saunders fouled out at the end of the St. Louis game on Wednesday night. And just before he did, he helped get this Duquesne team back in the game by completely disrupting inbound plays with his long wingspan, five plays in a row, either forced a knock out of bounds, a steal, or a timeout. It, it was really remarkable. But now he remains on the bench for the rest of this game. What does that mean to this Duquesne team? Well, I mean, Coach Ron Everard has some choices here. And basically, he needs guys in the game who are going to take care of the ball on the offensive end and be able to go to the foul line and make shots. On the defensive end, I think they just continue to keep doing what they're doing. They're playing, I think, very steady and solid half-court defense. Two shots for Derek Brown, 81% from the line this season. Six of 10 today. Xavier's 11 of 19. No. Dante Jackson getting ready to check back in. Receiving a some counseling from Sean Miller. Eric Evans, the freshman guard, gonna come in for Duquesne. Derek Brown gets that one to rattle in, and the lead is six for the Dukes as Evans comes in for Bolding. Holloway out for Jackson for the Musketeers. Well, I like that substitution because Evans can handle the basketball. Just gives him, Coach Ron Everhart another ball handler in the game to help Aaron Jackson. Evans controls to Jackson on the logo with 1.45 to go. Well, you want the decision making in the hands right now of the most experienced guy on the court, and that's Aaron Jackson. Tice has it up top. Left wing club. Ten to shoot. Evans, double team, finds Jackson. Back to Evans with five. Evans with four to Jackson. Let's it fly. Front rim, no good, and here come the Musketeers with 1.15 to go, trailing by six. Who does Xavier want to get the basketball here? Is it Brown? He's fouled on the three by Bill Clark, who can't believe it, and Brown has a chance to collect three points with the clock frozen at 1.12. Well, I was going to say, yeah, you want to get the ball to Brown, but not necessarily to take a three. I would have preferred to see him go to the basket, but it's worked out quite well because Brown's going to now go to the foul line for three foul shots. I am not sure that was a foul, John. That looked like a little bit of acting from Derek Brown after a slight graze from Bill Clark. Well after the ball was on its way, Brown takes advantage of the first free throw. Duquesne has not hit a shot from the field since the 7.45 mark. Big reason why Sean Miller's Musketeers have gotten back in this game. No good for Brown. Xavier's free throw woes continue today. 13 of 23 from the line. 56%. You're not going to hang that on the refrigerator. It's an 81% foul shooter. This is the guy you want on the foul line at the end of the game. But he misses two of three. Great rebound by C.J. Anderson, though, and a second chance for Xavier. Raymond can't get it to go. The tip from Love knocked into the arms of Love, who's called for the jaw. 
Well, that was the only way that Duquesne was going to be able to stop Xavier around the basket. There's nobody really to match up with Jason Love. Xavier hustles to keep the ball alive. And you can see as Love just kind of lowers that shoulder, throws the elbow, Duquesne able to draw the offensive foul. Good defensive under, play. under one minute to go for these Duquesne Dukes. Leading by five, 64-59 over ninth-ranked Xavier, who won 11 straight. David Tice gets fouled by Love. That's his fifth. He will exit. Well, I think that was a smart play by Xavier to foul Tice. Tice is a 36% foul shooter. Part of me actually was wondering why he was in the game, but a good move by Xavier to put him on the foul line. David Tice from the line this season, five of 19. Jason Love, six points, fouls out. For Duquesne, right now, 46 seconds away from your biggest win in over a decade. What are you thinking right now if you're Ron Everhart and the Dukes in that huddle? You know, I certainly don't think about uh, winning the basketball game. Like that, that, that moment hits you when it happens. You're really just focused on playing good basketball, and if it's going to take 46 seconds to win the game, so be it. It might take another 10 minutes. But as a coach, you really don't think about the outcome. You think about what's right in front of you at the moment, and that is we want to set up our defense if Xavier gets this rebound. It's a one and one. Tice, as we mentioned, 36% from the line. Xavier fouled the right man, but he answers. Ron Everhart, please. So is the crowd. Duquesne by six. Over the ninth ranked team in the country. Six and oh on the road this season. Ron Everhart saying to his team, don't foul anybody. And this is where a coach might know a player a lot better than you and I, Ryan. He might see Ryan Thice, Thice take shots in practice and make them critical situations in practice. We haven't seen that. We're just looking at the numbers. But Tice makes two huge foul shots. Oh, were those big. And the crowd is on their feet, hopping up and down. Xavier trails by seven. Whistle on the floor. Evans called for the bump. Holloway will shoot a pair. Xavier in the double bonus. And as a coach, I know, I, I see you leaning back in your chair, John. You got to cringe at that because the last thing you want to do is give Xavier a chance to score points without the clock winding down. Yeah, that's absolutely true. However, I give Holloway credit for going to the basket hard and making the contact, and I'm not sure really what Evans could have done otherwise other than let him get to the basket and, and shoot a layup. And he sinks the first one, the freshman, cool from the line, and this game is far from over. I think so. I, I think you're going to see Xavier set up some full court pressure, and if for some reason Duquesne can get out of the trap, you're going to see the Musketeers foul quickly. Holloway misses the second one. Great box out by Tice. Jackson is fouled. And David Tice allowed the deciding play to happen at his hands in that St. Louis game when he did not box out Willie Reed of St. Louis. A three-point play sealed the overtime win for the Billigans. But right there, a great box out by Tice, giving the red out reason to jump up and down. Coming to the game this afternoon, I was on a flight with some folks from Duquesne and, and coming into this game, they were hopeful that Duquesne could make this a competitive game. And it's been much, much more than competitive. The student body here, I mean, is, is you know, standing, ready to run out onto the court. And right now, Duquesne, the, the game is right in Aaron Jackson's hands. I mean, he has an opportunity to, to make this a couple possession game. It's already two possession. It could be a three possession game. He can knock down a foul shot. Now the issue here is the scoreboard had not yet changed the ninth team foul to the tenth team foul on Xavier. So the players were under the impression it was a one and one for Jackson, but it was and is in fact two shots. The first one no good. Here comes the second one for Aaron Jackson, who from the line this year 81 percent. And he makes that. One. Who gets the ball here for the Musketeers? Well, you just need a quick shot. Listen to that crowd. Is this the Palumbo Center or Heinz Field? 
Well, Pittsburgh has a lot to be proud about right now when you think back to a week ago and what happened with the Steelers. I'm not sure this is quite as big, but to the fans here right now, this is every bit as exciting. And for these Duquesne fans that have waited an awful long time to celebrate with a huge win over a nationally ranked team, they are on the verge. And you know, a celebration against a nationally ranked team means you storm the court. And it's a bit of a jump for those Duquesne fans. That's not your average leap. You gotta be a little careful. You have to be somewhat agile to make your way on your feet and onto the floor from that student section. I think the guy that's sitting at that table is wise to move because there's 28 seconds separating that student body from this court. It's a good idea for him to get his papers and briefcase out of the way. Coach Ron Everhart, however, isn't thinking about that. Right now, he's thinking about playing good defense on Xavier as they call the timeout to set up a play. And I think in this situation, you're really trying to set up two plays. You're trying to set up the offense and then what you're going to do defensively after you score. Very capable three-point shooters on the floor for Xavier, Redford, Raymond, Brown, Holloway. They all can hit from downtown. 23 seconds to go. Holloway for Redford. The clock winding down. Redford fires it up. Banks it in. And don't go away yet. You don't have to call the timeout to stop. The clock has already stopped. And a foul on DJ Raymond. 16.1 seconds remaining. Redford took that one from NBA Red. You know what? Redford's a really good shooter. He missed that shot. He flat out missed that shot. And 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 the ball, you know, he, he missed it right by an inch or two, but he got, you know, I'll call that good fortune because he's a fantastic shooter, and that was not by design. Mr. Basketball in Michigan his senior year last season in high school. Here's Mr. Duquesne, gets the roll. I mean, I give Brad Redford all the credit in the world for working hard at being a great shooter, but that just wasn't the shot he intended. He was well defended on that play. Jackson to push the lead up to six. Got it. Jackson with 19. Here's Holloway coming on 10 seconds remaining. Buries it. Full court pressure, you don't have to call the timeout. You need to get a foul quickly. Two huge threes here by the two young guys from the Musketeers. Terrell Holloway drains a three, the freshman. And how about Brad Redford, the other freshman knocks down a three. So the Musketeers score six quick points. Try to close this gap. Evans now, another freshman goes to the foul line. This is the closest Xavier has been since they trailed 9-7 to seven with 15.50 to go in the first half. Aaron Jackson will shoot the free throws, or will Eric Evans? There was some confusion as to who the foul was actually called on. Whoever shoots it, it will be two shots. Jackson entered this game at 81% from the line. Evans, 78% from the line. And the officials going to talk about it and find out who this foul was on as the teams huddle at their respective benches. What's Sean Miller saying to his Xavier team right now? Well, again, he's just looking to, you know, as, let's just replay this for a second. I think the, the official blew the, the call before Evans caught the pass. So my guess is Aaron Jackson's going to go to the foul line. And if Aaron Jackson goes to the foul line, there should be a little more time put on the clock as well. Probably a second, but you know, when you ask me what Sean Miller is going to do here, one, he's, he's planning as if Aaron Jackson's going to miss a free throw and they want to push the ball up the court quickly with eight seconds to go. Whoever gets the outlet pass is pretty much going to have to push it down and take the layup it's, if it's available or take the three. Duquesne has made five of their last six in this final minute. They get six and seven. And they lead by four. No time was put back on the clock. Probably should have been at least nine seconds as Bolding checks back in for Eric Evans. What do you want? The students on their feet at the Palumbo Center. They can taste the upset. The excitement palpable. Jackson trying to increase the lead. Yes. Talk 
about a confidence builder right now. This is going to really change everything for the team. Holloway swoops in and finishes 1.9. Left to go. Duquesne, 71. Xavier, 68. Go for the steal and the desperation three. You looking to foul again here? Well, you're going to have to somehow come up with a steal. I mean, that's your objective here. And if they don't come up with a steal, you got to foul right away. Some dispute right now in terms of how much time should be on the clock. And there should be a little bit more because when Jackson was fouled, it was not at eight flat. It was at nine point something. It was when Evans was touched on the previous play. Let's take a look at that. Shot by Holloway. Well, you can oh, see the, the clock, clock started yeah, there, too. The clock started before the ball was actually touched, so they're going to have to go back and put a couple seconds back on the clock. So the reference I was making to the clock came on the Duquesne possession prior to that, but right there, some time should have been added on for Xavier as well. And, you know, people say a second or two, but when it's this late in the game, a, a second or two means a lot. Oh, it's huge. It's yeah. huge. You know, when I first started out in coaching and before you had games on TV, I would send my assistant coach to the scores table to make sure that the timer in an away gym didn't have a quick finger. I'm sure this wasn't by design. This was an accident on the board of the official timer, but again, he just flipped the switch too quickly. And, and fortunately, we had the benefit of TV and, uh, and the ability to replay that so we can put more time on the clock. But again, going back 15 or 20 years where you didn't have as many games on TV, you were at a real disadvantage when you went on the road and you got a quick finger by the uh, official timer. 3.2 makes it seem a bit more possible for Xavier to come back. That's what the clock will be reset to. Well, right now, if you're Duquesne, you have to successfully inbound the ball. And the most important guy right now on the court is the inbounder, Jason Duty. He has to have the presence of mind to make a good decision here. Bill Clark in the timeout was getting fans on their feet. A lot of the Duquesne players went to the cafeteria this week, told people to show up for the game. They get a nice show. They certainly have. Foul on Xavier. And Duquesne looking to move closer to their first win against a ranked team since 1997. Bill Clark to the line. Not sure that was a bad decision by Xavier to put somebody on the foul line before time elapsed. Clark is one for five from the line today. Normally what you do in that situation is you go to the official and kind of alert the official that you're going to grab this guy's jersey, and I think that's what happened. Clark made that one. It's a two-possession game for the Dukes. Well, the guys that you're not expecting to make foul shots are stepping up. You saw David Rice do it. Clark makes one of two. It's tipped up in the air, volleyball, and for the first time since 1992, Duquesne has knocked off a top 10 team. It's time to make that red out head to the center of the floor. Well, tremendous basketball by Duquesne here, and you can see the fans celebrating. Ron Everhart now can take a moment to relax and enjoy what's just happened. A monumental win here against a terrific team. Xavier's going to bounce back. To Number nine in the country for good reason. By the time for Duquesne to celebrate, they haven't had this happen in a long time. And a proud moment here for all the fans, faculty, alumni, and student body here at Duquesne University. First win over a ranked team since January 25th of 1997, which came against Xavier. And it's their first win against a team in the top 10 since 1992, that came against Florida State. A final thought from you, John, on this monumental win by well, the Duquesne. Interestingly, in the second half, Duquesne changed their style of play. They actually played slower, more efficiently, but they played inspired basketball. Take nothing away from Duquesne here tonight. They just flat out outplayed Xavier. Maybe they caught them a little bit flat-footed, but Duquesne deserved this when they played a solid game from start to finish. Duquesne upsets the ninth-ranked team in the country. They win it 72 to 68. We'll be back with more in a moment. Big reason to celebrate if you're a Dukes fan.
What's this generation coming to? Same great deli taste that's wowed him for generations past. Isley's original chip chopped ham. Fresher, leaner, hammier. Remember Isley's. Ask for it now at your supermarket deli. Hi, I'm Carl Swanson, owner of Equipco in Bridgeville, PA. For 60 years, Equipco has been providing material handling solutions to the Tri-State area. Equipco provides you the very best service and support before, during, and after the sale. Our 28 service vans provide you quick local service. Call Equipco today for the total solution to your material handling needs and absolutely the best in customer service. The Pittsburgh Auto Show is heading to the David L. Lawrence Convention Center from February 12th through the 15th, where kids 12 and under get in free. Go to pitautoshow.com for more information. Catch Severin on Sportsbeat. See why it's the one sports show where the pros go. How much sugar is in these energy drinks? Let's find out. While waiting, you should know. 5-Hour Energy contains zero sugar and only four calories. Its blend of B vitamins and amino acids can help you feel awake, alert, and productive for hours without the crash or jitters. The answer is 12. Over 12 teaspoons of sugar and 200 calories in these energy drinks. Zero sugar and four calories in 5-Hour Energy. There's a reason people choose 5-Hour Energy two and a half million times a week. 5-Hour Energy. Hours of energy now, no crash later. When FSN Pittsburgh needed to furnish our new office space, we relied on the professionals at Mount Lebanon Office Equipment and the All Steel Collection. With our over 13,000 square feet of office space, we had extensive needs. And Mount Lebanon Office Equipment proved it was head and shoulders above the competition. For expert space planning, design, and the best in office furniture, call Mount Lebanon Office Equipment at 412-344-4300. Duquesne upsets ninth ranked Xavier 72 to 68. Ryan, a proud moment here at the Palumbo Center. These fans have been waiting a long time for a, a day, a moment like this. Ron Everhart has brought the club back. Now they have some momentum in the most critical part of the Atlantic 10 season. But a proud, proud moment for everybody here. The Duquesne Duke celebrating in the middle of their fans for John Griffin and our entire CBS College sports crew. I'm Ryan Rucco. For the latest Atlantic 10 scores, news, highlights, and analysis, log on to Atlantic10.com. This has been a presentation of CBS College Sports, the pulse of college sports. Duquesne beats a top 10 team for the first time since 1992. They knock off ninth-ranked Xavier.